<laughs> no. Metal Summoners, welcome back in. We have missed you. It's been a week, and that's been a week too long. So thank you guys, as always, for tuning in with us here on the Metal Summit. As always, we're your Island of Misfit Toys. We've got Angel. We've got Psycho Steve. We've got Bobby. And we are being joined by some excellent guests as well, who I will bring in very, very shortly. But as you guys uh, may or may not be aware of, you know, as always, we covered something very similar uh, to this a couple of weeks back, and you know what a positive uh, driven show that we are. But at the same time, we do have to occasionally discuss topics that aren't always the funnest things to talk about, but it's about keeping it more on a lighter type, you know, style, a higher platform, and just kind of thinking about the fondness and the good times um, about said individual. So unfortunately we did take a really massive blow to our music community uh, this week. Uh, we lost a couple of people. One person in particular, though, we're going to start right off with, um, and that was losing uh, Highball Music uh, CEO, owner, um, just staple of the scene in Bill Chavis. So unfortunately, you know, he is no longer with us. Um, he uh, unfortunately went down um, due to the COVID-19 um, uh, disease. So with that was really, really difficult for all of us. I know I can speak for myself, Bradley, all of the brotherhood here about, you know, what a good guy that Bill was. Um, I'll just start off real quick um, with a little story of my own uh, before I kick it to the guys. So I've known Bill myself for quite a number of years now. Um, the first time that I really started getting to know Bill was actually when I was still pretty green in the journalism, music journalism business. Um, I had already been doing interviews. I had finished a tenure. I had finished my tenure with a, uh, a Baltimore magazine that's no longer around, and I had since started my own thing. And Bill had gotten in touch with me because, as many people know, and some don't, he was very, very driven and very, very loyal to Every Mother's Nightmare and working very, very hard at getting those guys the biggest pushes that he can he could the best shows getting the albums out all that kind of stuff so i had known bill through every mother's nightmare but he had reached out to me during one of the big pushes that he was really trying to give them when the grind album came out and uh, that was actually the first time that i interviewed rick rule myself who a lot of you know as a tms alumni because he was on our show and had a fantastic time so that was my first time working with Bill and setting up working with Rick. And then after that, it always just kind of stayed as a solid relationship. And then I got to know Bill much more on a personal level because he started working a lot closer with uh, Brad Lee from shows, you know, that Every Mother's Nightmare was playing on, like the Sleazy Slimy Sundays um, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, Bill was always involved. I know he and Brad had their thumb, they had their fingers on the pulse, they had their hands in a bunch of different cookie jars for different ideas, different stuff that they wanted to do, um, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the last time I saw Bill was uh, probably two or three months ago, myself, him, Brad, Angie, we all got together uh, at a really cool little Mexican joint and just kind of talked shop and hung out and just kind of had a really, really good time. But uh, but Bill was a really, really good guy. He was incredibly loyal, very driven, you know, worked very, very hard. And he was very loyal to his artists. Um, newer bands like, you know, the Native Sons, who are also TMS alumni, who are really doing great things, you know, 
he was working with PJ Farley, who a lot of you guys are familiar with from Trickster and stuff he's done with Eric Martin and all that kind of stuff. But the, the biggest thing that I always really admired about Bill was just his loyalty and his drive and his protection for the people that were on, on his label. You hear plenty of people talk all the time about, you know, record labels and what they don't do for the artists. Well, Bill was definitely much more about what he did for the artist. And it was always very, very admirable and really interesting to watch him work and, and really be as loyal to those guys as he wants, uh, the, as he was. Psycho Steve, how about you? Uh, so I've known Bill over 20 plus years because he had another label before High Vol. He had Shavis Records and he brought a lot of uh, up and coming, but he also had some well-known acts. Like, you know, he had Quiet Riot right. on an album, The Bullet Boys for an album, uh, American Angel for an album. Um, and through anything I did, radio from terrestrial satellite to internet podcast to this you know he helped facilitate us getting ron keel you remember um and he was just you know i i spent some time with him in june at a, that benefit that i was the mc at and he was just really, you know him and his amazing wife lori who's still in the hospital uh, they were both just such incredible people and they are fans of our show and they, they, you know, were just, you know, I, I can never say anything negative about him because he just was so supportive of me and any endeavor I did. And I, I can always be eternally grateful, um, that he did what he did and he did so much, not just for me, but other artists. And like you said, he was more about the artist than any other label I would know, Absolutely. which is great. He always put them first, which is, you know, that's how it should be. So thank you, Bill. And Lori kicked this freaking COVID's ass. That's all I have to say. Absolutely. A hundred percent, man. Well said for sure. Bobby, let's kick it to you, brother. I only got to meet Bill in a short amount of time, you know, doing uh, uh, the BLM event. <laughs> Uh, Buy him. How's that? Keep going. Yeah. What do you think? Take a look. Yeah. Good. I think so. Talk. I think we will go too dark. Can you hear it? Yes. Now we can. Yep. No, oh, okay. Well, we were getting echo before, so I cut it down. So I thought it was me, but I guess it's not. Um, yeah, I, I got to meet Bill through uh, the BLE events that we started, uh, that Brad did early in the spring, and uh, just through that, and uh, that, and as well as being down at uh, Rock and Pod. So it was just a short amount of time, and it's a shame how this thing has just uh, look it affected you know our family, the TMS family here with. Uh, Angel and Steve. So, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, my heart goes out to he and his family and just wish them all the best. And, you know, look, I'm not going to preach to the choir, you know, just believe the fucking science and drink pink. <laughs> Absolutely. No, a hundred percent. And Angel, how about you, my good dude? What do you, uh, what do you remember about any interactions that you had with Bill? Uh, definitely was at the the festival that that Steve was hosting. Um, it was a uh, a brief meeting, but a very like I said, nice person. Just from hearing the memorials um, from his artist, uh, he was loved. Like Steve said, he he put his artist first. Um, just to his family, um, our thoughts, our prayers are with you in the difficult days of head um his legacy is going to be remembered um the bands that he represented they will always remember him here at the middle summit um we're always going to remember him always he's always going to be in our hearts he's always going to be in our minds he won't be forgotten and like i said uh, to his family um, we're sorry Absolutely. and our our hearts are are with you 
no, for sure. It was definitely incredibly sad. Like, um, you know, just he was, you know, he was one of us. He's always going to be one of us. You know, everything from the family to the BLE family to the Metal Summit family, but more importantly to real family, you know, his his wife, his kids, you know, his friends, you know, all that stuff outside the music industry. Um, so, you know, Bill, rest in power, brother. We love you, man. We'll always remember you. We've always got you, man. And we appreciate everything that you've given us and everything that your artists are going to continue to give us. So thank you so much, man, for everything that you've done, 100 percent. And thank you so much, Metal Summoners, for giving us a, a little opportunity to talk a little bit about Bill and, you know, remember the fond times and, uh, you know, show our appreciation and gratitude to him. So we definitely really, really appreciate that. On that note, I am going to bring in a couple of our guests who have joined us this evening. First and mm-hmm. foremost, from Nerd Halen, we've got Caleb Rappaport. How are you, brother? Good. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. You know. Thank you so much for taking some time. And guests, you know him. You know he's our brother. He's our family. Coming back again as guest host, we have Mr. Hal Sparks. How are you? Also also from Nerd Halen. Yes. Yes. Also, yeah, he's in Nerd Nerd Halen. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. hair just like us. Oh, there he is. For sure. Okay, Uh, here, man. Hundred percent from Nerd Halen from zero one. That's right. Absolutely. Impurify. Impurify. That's right. I don't know if you guys were, uh, if we ever talked about the Imperify uh, bit that I did with my buddy Stephen Brewer. Um, we did a song called Fall Awake um, that's uh, on my uh, YouTube channel. It's a, it's the hardest metal I've ever done as a singer and as a writer. Um, it's the heaviest stuff I've ever done, So, and I'm very proud of it. So go check it out, Impurify with a Y on the end. And uh, the song's called Fall Awake. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Dropping news. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> that hair, man. Yeah. Love the hair. For joining us again, Look brother. That hair. Yeah, Except for I Steve. Know. Steve was Incredible. very jealous. Damn straight I am. Yeah. You it's, got the beard. Be happy. Yeah, right. Yeah. I can't grow a beard. Uh, you know. I'll you any day. All right, yes, uh, I, I, that's fine. You can keep it. That's I, I'm okay. I'm good with that. I um, you don't want to look like Steve. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so sweet. <laughs> uh, now, I, now I remember why you guys don't do this show in the same room. Um, wait, like, <laughs> one thing to keep the show together is Zoom. Um, yeah. Now I've got I've, like my hair has entered into an uh, 1977 Ace Frehley meets. Uh, circa 1986 mark slaughter zone right now nice. that's the length i'm at and i'm proud of it <laughs> well i know that you got to fly yeah, in the yeah. height too a little bit of the heights right here the height you got the little heights right here you know the little oh. bit of oh know, yeah no yeah no you gotta i mean you gotta add some growth to it. Come on. yeah Absolutely, for sure. So, how Caleb? Let me kick it right to you guys, and why don't you guys talk just straight up a little bit about like Nerd Halen? Yeah. Oh, hey. oh look, hey, there they are. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Nerd Halen. Halen. Oh, 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 we just played I a show with them. I need Halen to actually problems. get this a little bit because you know our drummer would like to be more in so the much better. And I know those guys. I promise yeah. not to green screen anything in behind you guys later that would be uh, compromising or untoward. <laughs> I will. Good luck. As you will. <laughs> I don't think anything could shock us. No, we'll, I don't catch, we'll catch the pulsating <laughs> bubble. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Uh, so Nerd Halen, uh, well, they were an amazing band to have to follow. Oh, <laughs> nice. Put it that way, because we played a show with them at the Echo uh, oh, on uh, what August first, mm-hmm. and it was a great show. But uh, you know, after watching them, I was like, "Oh man, we <laughs> we better bring it tonight." So yeah, and you and you did. It was a it was a lovely double bill. We're all very proud. Is that a stars? Like, as in we're stars, as in here and aid shirt? Or no, no, yeah, that's the oh. band stars. That's the band, Richie Rano stars. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You yourself. know, Richie played on Gene Simmons' solo album. You should I know this by now. I know. Right. I, but I also am a big fan of uh, of here and aids, we're stars. The, the I know, they should have form. Different logo, 10 demerits from Hal. 10 Thank demerits. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> back it was covering it. Oh, for shame! I couldn't see well, if there here, was a weird. We, since we've got Gacy DC front and for uh, front and center here, first and foremost, 
Thank you guys for joining us this evening. Woo! Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. Rocking out with my cocktail. <laughs> one for right. 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 So when, since we've got you uh, first and foremost right up front on the screen here, why don't we just kick right into you guys. Talk a little bit about the start of Gay CDC and what was it about ACDC in particular as that band to model this really cool project after. So let's uh, let's go a little bit back in our Doc Brown time machine. Okay. Well, it started with um, a group of gay musicians that I was familiar with in LA. And they said, we would like to start an all gay tribute to the Go-Go's and we're going to call it the Gay Gays. So that was about 2003. And then that sort of petered out and a couple of people Brian actually was in one of the last versions of the Gay Gays. And as it, you know, the lead singer said, yeah, I don't want to do it anymore. And we were like, okay, well, we've been doing it for almost 10 years. What else could we do? And somebody else said, well, you know, we were throwing out gay names of bands. And, and you know, I was like, oh, how about a gay CDC? <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yes. And we all got on our phones at the very same time and did a Google search. And we all looked up and said, how does this not already exist? Right. There's not yeah. already an ACDC somewhere. So we thought, yeah, I think maybe we could probably try that as long as we flip it. So as long, the music has to be correct, yes. but we can flip their image, which is all about black t-shirts and jeans, and then go with this instead. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. What? And from my, and from my understanding, you've also taken a couple of their songs and kind of tweaked them in certain ways to make it a little bit more pride friendly. Yeah, we took some liberties with the lyrics and uh, and the presentation, of course, um, but uh, all all in good fun. I mean, the whole idea is not to parody ACDC. We are all huge ACDC fans, mm -hmm. so the idea was to uh, to um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Make sure that we are are getting it right musically. Honor because it's, them. Yeah, on. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I can always count on you for good work. <laughs> Um, so to honor their their legacy and their sound and to make sure because it's you know it's complex in its simplicity people just listen to all that's really simple it isn't so simple so uh, we want to make sure we got all that right and then just play with the lyrics and the presentation and the one thing that we all had in common was we basically have ACDC running through our DNA um, mm -hmm. that's a bunch of gay rockers it, it was sort of the foundation of, of the music that we listen to but when we got together we said well, when we turn it on its ear, let's let's put the lyrics to what we wish that lyrics had been growing up as, as little gay boys. Yeah. What would that have sounded like? And then Chris went to town and and before we knew it, some of the some of the titles we didn't have to change, but some of them we had a lot of fun in changing. Sure. Big balls, for example. Exactly. Sure. So. All it took is having a guy in a dress sing it, and a whole different uh, a whole different <laughs> meaning comes out. Sure. But I will say to to, to finish on the story. There was one element missing, and that was Chris was playing bass at the time, and so we were trying to find a singer. And just no one was working out to try and find an out gay singer that could nail ACDC. And so we, Chris actually found Steve, which was the other missing, the other missing piece, because we said, how are we going to find an Angus? That's like the singer and Angus. Those are the two really mm -hmm. focal points. We, those have to be spot on. So Chris had been talking to Steve, and, and we all decided that, um, and Chris had known Glenn. So Chris said, what if we ask Glenn, and what if we get Steve to come in, and what if I audition to sing? The audacity. The audacity. The audacity. So we all just kind of said, why not? But we're not going to treat you any different than we would any other singer. And even though this was all our brainchild, you're going to come in and audition just like off the street, and we would judge you just like anybody else. Maybe a little and they more. really did judge. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but here I am. They cut him off next song. Get the fuck out of here. Done. We might Jesus. have thrown a little more shade than we normally would at him, mm -hmm. but he came and delivered like no one's business. I was sweating in my panties. I got to tell you, I was not. I was really nervous. He was a bit nervous, <laughs> but he nailed it. Yeah, it was fun. And then, but we waited till the next day to tell him. We let him sweat it out the rest of the day. We always serve oh, nice. really, really I've always wondered that. about that. Oh, my God. We yeah. all said, let's just call him tomorrow. You <laughs> definitely <laughs> made him earn it. 
100 yeah, exactly. We let him simmer in his panties a little bit. We, we knew there was a lead singer with a hoop dress just popping out behind the face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Clint, I've actually known Clint for a long time, so we actually had a member change after COVID, so I'm welcoming And not because of COVID, by the way. Not, yeah, here. not because, but just still among the living. Yeah. During, during the COVID. Hey, a shout yeah. out to Carl, yeah. who actually came up with the name of the Yeah, band. actually, he was the one who actually spouted out Gacy and Easy, and we're like, he had been doing the riff to Back in Black, and we just looked at him, and he looked up and said, Gacy DC. <laughs> so huge shout out to Carl. Nice. And, and I, I feel like I owe you guys an apology for my joke <laughs> in your set, which was uh, my buddy Richard Hunter actually said this to me as a joke, um, was that, of course, that I, I made a joke that my character in Nerd Halen didn't understand the concept of the band and was very curious why people would do like a clown-themed John Wayne Gacy ACDC cover band and if you performed in a crawl space and what was the like that that running gag that was actually seated in in my buddy Richard Hunter making a gay CDC joke that would uh, I mean talk about edgy that, uh, if you guys came out in clown makeup and did gay CDC that's a that's a whole nother level but it was a guy it was a guy named Dick Hunter that gave that's right line. yes Richard Richard Hunter um, who who used to go on on? Uh, yeah, uh, he was on the radio in in Dallas, Texas, for years as Big Dick Hunter. Perfect. So, which I, sounds, you know, like a, Dick sounds like a Dick Hunter. I know, I, no doubt. <laughs> I'm surprised you. I'm You're surprised you guys. The webs. That's right. I'm surprised you guys can actually be on stage at the same time due to that. So, <laughs> it well, was it, it was um, definitely out of out of it was a an ad lib that night because most of the stuff that hal does we've we've done before and i'm i'm ready for but when he said that one i definitely had to compose myself so. <laughs> i keep just trying to relax caleb that's what yes here's the thing caleb's playing it, i mean he nails eddie's playing like it's amazing to watch it's inspiring and it's a thing of beauty but one of the things that Eddie always had was the fact that he was always smiling while he played. It was one of the things that set him apart from other players that that really can kill it on the guitar. Is that most of them are making these kind of pinched, angry faces or whatever, it's, or or Ace Frehley with the puckered lips, just you know. <laughs> but 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 Eddie just looked like you could see the joy of playing in it. And one of these days, I'm going to get it to where Caleb is smiling that much while he can enjoy it. Maybe after yes. uh, you know. After gig 100, that's when it'll kick in. It you know, might have to be hope. some sort of a, you know, some sort of a prosthetic in his mouth to kind of force <laughs> yeah, yeah. the smile like up. Like, like, <laughs> like Jim Carrey's teeth from the mask. <laughs> Speaking from experience. We're no strangers to something like that. Sure, no, absolutely. That's not on a rider. <laughs> that's going to that's be the next things to add to the rider. But we're going to kick it to our beloved. We're going to kick it to our own TMS queen, Bobby Dreyer. And is that our beloved Tony that I see? Uh, as well? Tony's here. Hey, how? Tony. How are you? There he is. In the mine shaft. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah! Look at that. Genius. Get out, whatever that means. <laughs> it's a it's a band of our dear friend Todd Kearns and others in it. It's a it's a great band. So there you go. How the coolest thing with you guys doing the show with uh, Gacy DC and look, I got to thank you guys, all of you, for coming on tonight. I know it was a little early and everything, but as soon as I seen you and you did the thing with Doug Panic, who's going to be calling in in a little bit. So, nice, cool. You know, Doug, oh, that's jumping it's in. So we can but, all wish him a happy birthday, belated. Yes, wow. seventy-one years old. Can you believe that shit? No. Yes, I can. <laughs> no. Hey, this guy just turned 79. Right. Wow. No way. Happy birthday. Yeah. I will uh I will be 52 this month. So there you go. Wow. Me too. Yeah. There you, no. Yeah, that's right. We both will. Within, We're three uh, days apart. Right. So I gotta throw this whole thing out. Look. With you guys doing this and how, look, Tony and I fell in love with you 2000, what is it, 21? Or, or, uh, uh, right, right, when, uh, right when you started doing Queer as Folk. Yeah, 2001. 2000, yep. It you know, came out in 2001, well, yep. 
because we shot it. I, I mean, what's the irony of you guys that playing together? Mad- <laughs> <have been coming about? laughs> uh, you know, I I think it's more ironic that Gacy DC managed to form under the like the kind of double entendre of that name, which is fantastic, and and we ended up lucky enough that the trajectory of my life ending up in a a, a comedy Van Halen tribute band is not that weird. There's nothing surprising about any of that. The needle being threaded for Gacy DC's existence and my time on Queer as Folk is more of a miraculous uh, twist of fate than almost anything else. And works perfectly. What, you know, it wasn't like I discovered activism and my belief in things like gay marriage in 2001 or 1999 because I was hired to do a goddamn show. I had always felt that way. I worked with Marianne Williamson in Project Angel Food in, you know, 1990, 1989, um, you know, when we were, you know, we were doing deathbed visits during the height of, yeah. the, you know, the 90s part of the AIDS crisis and that kind of stuff. And working, I built the sink at Project Angel Food. I installed their new sink in the kitchen as a, as a volunteer um, after, you know, like repairing that whole thing and stuff. So I was well into that stuff before you know, Queer as Folk was even a, you know, a, a gleam in, in the BBC's eye. Well, so. I love the whole fact how, and, you know, Caleb, you know, uh, Caleb and I have a deep running relationship with uh, F.U. Dash Tone, Adam Reaver, and, you know, right. we'll let me be H on that end. But I want to know right now, how did the whole thing come about with you guys meeting each other or running in, into each other? C- or- Caleb... Caleb, you tell your version of it because I've told my version of this, and I'm curious if yours lines up with mine. <laughs> What's it a bathhouse? I'm just asking <laughs> for a friend. <laughs> no, uh, uh, we uh, well, the whole nerd Halen thing came uh, from uh, me trying to come up with something to spotlight my playing Uh, i've always played like this he's been my number one influence my whole life and uh i just wanted to honor him and uh you know have have fun doing a tribute and uh i wasn't going to be able to do a straight tribute to van halen because i'm six four and in a wig i would look like howard stern stage left (laughs) and uh it just wouldn't work out that way so i was uh, advised to try coming up with a gimmick and uh the whole nerd halen thing came to me like in a dream basically and uh it took several months uh to to get uh uh i had to infiltrate the ultimate jam night Mm -hmm. here in the hollywood at the at the whiskey and uh that's i was i was told that that's where i would find my band members and I'd never been to one of those jams. There's like three or four in Hollywood uh, that, that were happening at the time. And I just went down Tuesday night uh, and I ran into a friend and he uh, he kind of got me backstage there and, and introduced me to some people. And, and then I started just networking and wasn't even trying to get on stage myself. I was just trying to find players and, and uh, eventually uh, I made my way to that stage and uh, that was an incredible moment because I, you know, when you, you, you can't play in that jam unless they say, you know, Hal Sparks from zero one or, mm-hmm. you know, so, so, and so from, and I had nothing to, that I was from. And, uh, <laughs> but I was, I was building nerd Halen on the internet, on social media before there was ever was a band. It was just me but I was making it look like there was a band. And uh, um, that was kind of uh, what I would, you know, the, the the adage fake it till you make it uh, was exactly what I was doing. And it, and it really, it really helped in this situation. But anyway, Hal is also a, a long time member of the Ultimate Jam. And uh, we had, uh, we connected once where it was a, a benefit at the whiskey. And I, I came on my first time on that stage. I played Eruption and then Panama with an all-star band. And Hal was the host that night of that uh, function. And he jumped up for the second half of Panama. And I kind of looked over and thought, like, I know that guy. and uh, <laughs> But I never said anything, never talked to him. 
and then uh, the the original drummer that I had for the band is this guy named Forrest McKinnon, who was the co-host of Ultimate Jam Night, and he recommended Hal Sparks to me, and uh, I thought, wow, uh, yeah, you think we can get him? And he goes, I don't know, I'll talk to him because they were doing a side project together, and he said that Hal was interested, like he he liked the idea. And then this, but three or four months passed, and uh, finally, uh, the night of ho- the Halloween uh, thing that the Ultimate Jam Night does is they do a full, uh, straight Rocky run Horror. through of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and mm-hmm. um, Hal was playing the geeky boyfriend. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Brad. 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 Right, and Brad. and uh, <laughs> I would go, I'd go down to the jam. And I went down that night because I knew Hal was going to be in it, and I knew I needed to confront him. <laughs> and uh, I got there early, and it was turned out that was the only night where they weren't allowing people to mingle backstage. They right. Just, they just wanted the players, and that was it. Nobody else. But I got up there before they kind of enforced that, and I remember going into the main dressing room at the whiskey, and it was just Hal looking in the mirror, checking himself, and he had these babies on. Yep. And, and I said, you're perfect. And he goes like, he looks at me, he goes, yeah, right? And I go, no, no, not for this, for Nerd Halen. And he looked at me, and then he looked back in the mirror, and then he looked at me, and he goes, right? And yeah. then, and that was it. And uh, he said to call him in a month because he was going to China for a show, and and we had coffee, and, and uh, you know, it, the, the rest – was, yeah, uh, is history much, is yeah, is, the current, rest is, is history. current history. Also, by the way, uh, so uh, what he doesn't remember too is that when we first met, he mentioned it, and I said I'm in. Even this is even before Forrest brought it up to me. <laughs> I don't know that he heard. Me. I think you were just kind of like, Ugh, uh, and then I was he probably in shock. Yeah, and then I didn't hear from him for a couple months. I was like, all right, well, that would have been fun if that had ever happened, I suppose. And then I'm doing that show. I'm literally wearing the nerd glasses for Brad in Rocky Horror. And we're like, let's do it. Let's just do it, you know? And I, in all honesty, you know, because I do my daily live stream where I'm doing politics all the time, a lot of the activism that I've done is really fucking serious. Stacking on top of that other serious stuff, even when it's serious music, is an extra sort of a weight. And there is no pressure valve in it. And and a project like this, and the guys in Gacy DC, I'm sure will recognize this as well, is such a, like a freeing thing to go through. It just lets it, you know, where you can enjoy yourself and enjoy the music and have a great time. There's just such a vibrance to it that you can't necessarily have when you're presenting your own music in a lot of ways, because there's always that extra layer of, of pressure. You want to get it right. It's yours. It's being judged by an audience. The things you can never shake as an original performer, when you're doing something like this and you know, you're doing it for sheer fun. You're not like, we are atomic punks. We are the ones, no one is better than us. We're not coming at it from that angle. We're coming at it from, this will be a great time. Which is much closer, by the way, I think, to what uh, yes. Van Halen initially sought to do themselves. Yeah, the, the, right? the one thing that all the other tributes do is that, you know, they, they kind of, they, they go after a, a look of Van Halen in 1984 Mm-hmm. They're they're older gentlemen our age, but they're trying to look like twenty seven year old versions of Van Halen, and and you know that's tough to pull off. And, and so, they take Caleb, themselves. I gotta interject here and jump yeah. it over to Gacy DC. Speaking of older gentlemen, okay, when you got what? Well, <laughs> well, my partner. Um, the the Britney Spears skirt. The stockings, the boas. I, mm-hmm. I love what you guys do. I, I mean, what you know, do you how does the younger gay crowd take this from you guys? They're usually asking me how I keep my uh, butt in shape or how to make my their butts bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you and by the way, did you just ask Gacy DC how the younger gay crowds take it from them? You know, it's tough because uh, a lot of people don't even know uh, about ACDC at all. 
um, people that are half my age. So um, it's it's a little tough with that, but that's why I think when we come out and we've got a spectacle, it, they get looped in with the spectacle yeah. and then they hear the music. And that, there's going to be a, you know, they'll be able to connect with one or two songs. I mean, they have so many hits that you sort of can't miss. Oh, right? that's and, an ACDC and, and, song? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. right. Sort of like jog the memory or whatever, even for the, the, the younger people. Yeah. You know, and that, right. I've, we've seen, we've seen just a range of things from, you know, dancing along, singing along to bending over. So. <laughs> well, we'll talk off the air because I, I have a friend who does one magical weekend in Disney and I need to introduce you guys to him because it, it's definitely, look, you have a, uh, Almost a half a million gay men who take over Disney World every year. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, when we when we got together, we we did it for basically shits and giggles because we thought, oh, you know, we'll play the Eagle once. Well, maybe we'll play, a, you know, someone's backyard party for, you know, for the gays. And our first show was at the Eagle. And shout out to to Charlie for for booking us and giving us the chance. Um, but we didn't really get a gay crowd. What we saw was we were getting starting to get booked at regular clubs, music clubs, mm -hmm. and we did not see that coming. And pretty soon one booking led to another, to another, to another. And we were playing to lots of straight women who love us. And we're the ultimate bachelorette party. We are the <laughs> ultimate bachelorette party. <laughs> complete with party favors. <laughs> Thanks to the <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. When I, yeah. It's funny, when I made the announcement on Friday for you guys being on the show, I was putting together what I was going to write, and I was like, oh, this is just too good. Like, how else could you possibly be thunderstruck while looking at a rainbow? <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to type that in. That's just too funny. Well, but speak, but uh, I'm actually going to kick it over to Psycho Steve, who we haven't heard from quite yet. Angel, you're on deck, buddy, along with the Metal Summoners. But Psycho Steve, take it away, brother. So I am definitely a fan. I watch all your videos on YouTube. They're freaking incredible. Uh, the question I have, I noticed in the Big Balls uh, video, you had uh, Johnny Martin from L.A. Guns. How did that come about? Well, this goes back to, uh, as Caleb was talking about Ultimate Jam Night, we also um, are very thankful to the, the Jam fam for giving us a, a start there. Our first show was with for a benefit for the Orlando Pulse shooting, and they invited us to come and play, and they just welcomed us and became part of the family. That's how we got to know Johnny, and uh, a, a couple shows later within the year, Chris and I guested uh, with Johnny and Alex Kane doing a... Jane County, two Jane County songs. Oh, right. And Johnny, uh, and it was the night that we were um, honoring also our good friend Chuck Panazzo from Styx. Oh. Um, we brought him out here, and they were honoring him that night. So Chuck came with us to the show, and we walked up backstage to the dressing room. And we turned into the dressing room, and there's Johnny Martin in a full one-piece bodysuit, white bodysuit. <laughs> and Chuck stopped and looked, looked at Johnny awesome. and said, Get a load of her. <laughs> and Johnny turned around and said, I think that's the best compliment I've ever gotten in my life. And Johnny and I and us became fast friends. So whenever Johnny's in town, we're doing a show. He's always welcome. He's come to play with us before. He supports us. He's 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 great. We just love him, love him, love him. So a lot of people at, at Ultimate Jam Night have become, you know, like family to us. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And then back well off of that, mm -hmm. um, do you guys have day jobs or is this your full time gig? We have gay jobs. Oh, yeah, we, we have all have day jobs. We have day jobs. We have day jobs. We have day jobs. We have day jobs. Syrup drinks by the chin. Hand jobs are still jobs, you know? <laughs> oh, oh really? Yeah, exactly. It's a nine to five, job. you know? Sometimes. Time for that. <laughs> Uh, my mother-in-law is watching this. I'm going to have a lot to explain when I get home. Oh. Nice oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. well, that's the best way to come out is on this show. <laughs> what is this asthma? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we all have other jobs that we that we love and, and allows us to do this. But one of the things that we found out quickly was that this band started to gain momentum. It became like a business. So we had to learn how to manage ourselves and do the merch and do the booking and all that stuff. 
Yeah, it's it was interesting because uh, you know I I've been in a band or I have been in a band um, called Pansy Division before this. It's an original band. Yeah. It's Thirty. It's our thirtieth anniversary this year. Wow. Well, so I've already kind of been through the. We're going to try and make a living from this, and said no, um, and that's why we're still a band, honestly. Um, so we kind of kept the expectations low for this band, and. And back to that other argument about, um, you know, venues and ages and stuff, that, that conversation happened a long time ago, too, with Pansy Division, where you just, you know, you don't know it, how many, who's going to be in your audience, you know, who's, right. uh, who's going to make what's, up what, your, the, the... What do you yeah. say, too gay for rockers and yes. too rocking for gays? That's correct. Too rock for the gays and too gay yeah. for the rockers. <laughs> but we're still going to do it. We're going to do it anyway, because... You know, back when we started Pansy Division, we said, you know, I don't want to live in a world without uh, without gay rock or with, you know. Mm -hmm. And this, the year we started uh, and the time I joined, Freddie Mercury just died. So we thought now we have a purpose because now we want to make sure that we don't live in a world where, you know, musicians can't be out of the closet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to butt in real quick because Tony's got a ready to roll. So um, Hal knows about Tony. Tony was former congressman from your beautiful yep. state out there from California. Right. Tony was also the author of the ADA. Um, the great thing about it too with Hal and you guys, when he wrote the ADA, he included people with AIDS, HIV, everything there, you know, um, and that's one thing Hal with everything you've done with your activism, uh, you know, through mm -hmm. Nerd Halen, your show, Gay CDC, what you guys are doing. Uh, but a lot of, and going back to the younger gay men, think it was, you know, an old farts disease. How, how do you, you know, Keep good. Relative, you know. No, good. Good. They they should they should look back. I I I don't want to be in a world where we're still worried about tuberculosis either. There should be a point where gay people aren't carrying around the weight of AIDS as their primary defining factor, like they were for the better part of two decades. It's not necessary. Let, you it, 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 believe me, they will grow up, they will get older, and they will recognize that holy shit, an entire generation of us were nearly wiped out by this thing. They will have a, a lasting respect for it while not having to live in fear of it. It's a good thing. Now they can deal with the other shit, which is having a relationship, whether you want one or not, whether you want to get married or not. The options of life that everyone else is afforded. That's the beauty of it. I they uh, hope to God one day that most of the diseases everyone deals with is an old farts disease. I got news for you. We're all going to go through, you know, as we've been going through COVID. In about a decade, people are going to go, what was that thing again? And it's it's even though it's a defining factor of everyone's social life right now and kids in school and masks and all that kind of shit, it's going to have its time and pass as well. And how I'm glad you, that that's how we're just remember, How many of you remember polio? Right. Exactly. <laughs> right? right. That's right. right. And one of the things, the people who do remember polio are crippled by it and, and physically live with those limitations and are helped by the ADA. That's right. You know, that's that's what it was for, is for people who have the lasting damage from it. And and the goal ultimately is that nobody ultimately needs ADA level support in their lives because we eventually find cures for deafness and blindness and 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 all the other circumstances. And when we don't, there's we have a substructure of that the ADA created where people can count on it, that there are ramps where you need them to be, that that you know, elevator doors are wide enough to deal with people's uh, wheelchairs, stuff like that, that, that is incredibly valuable that we all now take for granted. And like I said, but, Mike, but you know, I always we, say, but yeah, I always right. say uh, that everybody eventually gets a disability. Yep. Um, and that means being able to walk, being able to do any kind of thing, so forth. As we get older, the ADA is an insurance policy for old farts. Yes. And and it it is there. And that's when we wrote it. Uh, that's what we understood. Now, you're right. In some diseases or disabilities, uh, it'll become passe. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have 61 million people in the United States who have a disability. Right. And and those aren't you know, th those will pass, but others will come in. Sure. And so it's the ADA is there going to be there for a long time. 
hopefully, if the Republicans don't kick it out. But uh, it's going to be there uh, a long time, and it's needed. Yeah, I, 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 we talked about this the last time we, we were all on together. But I, my dad, one of his jobs working for the state of Kentucky when I was growing up was making all the state buildings compliant. So yeah. he added all the ramps and the rails and widened the doors and put in the automatic doors eventually that would lead to people being able to push something so the door would open for them. Those kind of valuable additions so that, the, again, this kind of goes to the question about, you know, AIDS being an old farts disease in that regard, is that this shouldn't be between you and being you. Some things are inevitably going to be. If you're born with one leg, that's going to be an issue that you're going to deal with your whole life. And hopefully prosthetics and other stuff will eventually make it even nearly invisible as well, right? But when it comes to something like um, HIV and AIDS, getting to the point where it's a manageable disease and then getting to the point where it's over, you can overcome it entirely, not pass it on, not have it be a death sentence, and then eventually be able to wean yourself off the medications means that you can eventually get on with the, the difficult work that everyone goes through just having a life. And that means being able to go to shows and just enjoy yourself without the burden of this bullshit on your shoulder all the time. And that's sure. that, again, is why not only things like not only is it fun to be in Nerd Halen, not only is it fun to watch Gacy DC and, and, you know, and and put the shows on, I'm sure, but there's a value to it. There's a genuine life value to being able to go for a lot of audiences and see ACDC or see Nerd Halen and have a joyful time with all the sh- life. You don't need any help making life difficult. You don't need any help making life complicated or dangerous or any of that shit. It will do all the work for you. The work that needs to be done is someplace to go smile. Right. And that's what right. I think both of these bands actually specialize in which I, and, and that's what makes me proud of it. Here, here. Well said. We thank well, you guys for coming on yeah. and, and doing this. And, you know, like I said, I want to do uh, Yeah. Nice to meet all you. you know, Absolutely. And, and thank it's been you, great. Tony. And yeah. Tony. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you for the ADA. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that. No. And, 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 like and I'm really glad that you put up with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have Absolutely. you 24 7. And, bought, and so, take two Cialis tonight. I don't know what that meant. Wow, <laughs> two. But um, but yeah. But Bobby, as like a closing thing here before I kick it over to Angel, is um, you know, even just something you know, like with the ADA that just helps, like just people in general. Like speaking for myself, as like as the youngest member of of TMS, like a couple of years ago, I'm crossing the street get mowed down by a car, breaks everything in my right leg, shatters my shoulder, puts my body through her windshield. And while I'm healing, things like the ADA allowed me to have it a little bit easier while I'm healing. I could apply for a handicap placard that was able to go in my car when I was able to drive again to get a little bit closer to the building so I wouldn't have to walk as far. Even just little stuff like that, you know, is is very much appreciated by even somebody like me of like a younger generation for the stuff that Tony, you know, put forward when it came to all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just I'm glad he's stuff. not here because every time he hears those accolades like that, Jay, turns me into a bottle. I'm just saying. I got you, brother, for sure. Absolutely. There's a legend. A legend in the house. I, I Absolutely. So, uh, fan, uh, you did hear all of us tease a guest being joining us tonight. And we have been joined by said guest, TMS alumni, a very happy 71st birthday to oh, King Jackson's Doug Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh my God. Yes. Hey, Doug. <laughs> Thank you. Doug, how are you, brother? Hey, Doug. No miss complaints. You. Hey, Hal. I miss you too, man. Yeah. Oh, Think about you a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, How you feeling? Dude. How's life? How's how was your birthday? I know you were over at at Richie's house. Did you go over there for dinner yeah, or something? That that was Sundays. Uh, uh, yeah, Saturday I think Rita uh, Dimeshag and uh, Tracy and uh, uh, Joey Vera we we had dinner together for the same celebration. Awesome. So it was really good. The day I, the day of my birthday, I stayed home and actually read all the messages that I got. Uh-huh. Thousands of them. I read them all and liked them. And uh, oh. and I and, and the good thing about it though is I very seldom do that because you just got time and it's just so many. And um, 
but I, I saw relatives and people I haven't talked to in years. Mm-hmm. Things that that slid by me all these years, and I just feel 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 bad about that. And it just made me appreciate people more. You know, reading it, it was pretty cool. It was very humbling. Yeah, yeah. There's no well, there's no way you're 71. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I I no way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, he is. He's precisely 71, so he can rub it in the faces of other 71-year-olds that make him feel like they're 100. I love it. That's right. It's a beautiful thing. Like it's if you're 70, if you're 71, and people are like, "Look at you, that's adorable," then you're in trouble. But if you're like, if everybody's like 71, get the fuck out of here. You're like, that's you're doing it right, and that's what that's Doug. Thanks. Awesome. Absolutely, 100 percent, man. For that's sure. right. So I'm going to jump in real quick uh, just because, uh, Angel, you've been very, very patient, brother. Let me kick it over to a segment for you. How are you doing this evening, and how are the Metal Summoners doing? I am doing awesome. Again, just want to say hello to to everybody that's that's watching. Um, Candy, um, thank you for watching again. Um, mm-hmm. Peter, Chris Starr, Michael. Uh, celeb, um, Lisa, thank you for watching again. Uh, I'm sending you your package on its way. Mm-hmm. Um, we, def- we definitely have a new person that's that's watching. Um, Bibi Lopez, who was actually my middle school crush. I used to walk her home every day in, in sixth Aww. grade, so she's watching. Um, nice. Thank you for watching. Guys, don't embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> you beat us to it. I know, but we got a few Howdy, questions. Bro. I'm trying. I'm trying to look like Matt Porter today. <laughs> this is like my Matt Porter intimidation. <laughs> oh, Matt wanted to know. Uh, okay, okay, I got mm-hmm. a question right here. Uh, what are you drinking? Yeah, he Ooh. wants to know what everybody's drinking. He knows I'm drinking. Jack Daniels. Well, you want to know what Bobby was drinking, but my mind went blank. I understand. AJ, what Yo. color is that? That is pussy pink. Yeah. Oh, my Cosmo. So, so it's got it. So your Cosmo, Bobby, has to be pussy pink, right? It can't be blood red carry, yeah? No, it can't be carry red, and it's got to be in a glass that says P on the front. <laughs> That's the spirit. Um, there you go. And um, Matt has a music request. I guess he thinks we're MTV or something. So he has a music request. Celeb has his guitar. Can he play some riffs? Celeb. Two, please. Yes. Celeb can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Caleb is a celeb. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yes. That's gonna be off. Hey, look, no center swing. Oh. We don't do that. He's smiling. smiling. (laughs) Yep. You're very picky. So I yeah, it's no, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's so it's super fucking fun. And by the way, um, I I I've always been a you know a Van Halen fan. Not you know I was never in the depths that Caleb's in because like we say on the on the uh, spectrum. Uh, Caleb pins the needle at, at Eddie and, um, and, and in like, you know, my, my favorite song, and we talked about this a bunch. My favorite song is I'll wait by, uh, you know, my favorite Van Halen song is I'll wait. Um, my favorite song is Summerland by King's X, but oh, we'll, yeah. you know, yeah. Doug's, Doug's yeah. voice and the beauty of it. That's <laughs> true. But, um, but I find now that if I hear the unchained unchained riff because of Caleb's playing, that like I could punch a hole in in a brick wall. Like it's so, it's such a, <laughs> it's such the riff. It's so fun and it's such a like a starter. That song will kick everything into overdrive. Uh, overdrive. It's amazing. So yes, absolutely, hundred percent. 
Angel, by the way, back, everybody. Oh, I just wanted to say we haven't even. Oh, no, absolutely. Yet. We're an hour in. Uh, we just booked the Monsters of Rock cruise, and I think it's huge uh, mm -hmm. for our pretty. little our little tiny band uh, that mm -hmm. uh, we uh, got into this huge, uh, you know, rock festival on water, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's just amazing to see us listed with you know Queens Reich and Alice Cooper and yeah, uh, um, uh, Winger and L.A. Guns. Tom uh, Keeper, Cinderella, and they just yeah. lost a couple of their players and like Jeff yeah. Labar and their yes. keyboard player and that kind of stuff. And like mm. to, to see those guys playing, I, I would like to remind everyone, uh, if you need to be reminded because of COVID, that um, there are no final tours that you know of. You don't know when someone's mm. final tour is coming. Ask Scott Weiland that yeah. you do not know when someone's last tour is. So you don't get to skip mm. shit and go, you know, maybe I'll go next time. No, you, you go. If it's your yeah. band and you love them or you want to see them, go see them. When they're in your town, it's a moral yeah. imperative. <laughs> yeah. That is true. You're right. Yeah, so, nope. so what I was saying is it's, we're very excited. This is huge for us. And mm -hmm. uh, we're going to, we're going to bring the nerd to the boat. And we're gonna, you know, do our best uh, to uh, deliver yes. to all those people who have not even heard of us. Uh, you know what what kind of thing we do, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, especially like Eddie Trunk, we're gonna be in front of him for the first time. So we really got to bring it, and uh, it's right. gonna be it's gonna be. That's uh, why we're. And by the way, I'm preparing a lot of backing tracks to use. Um, <laughs> just I just and also skip the shrimp. Skip the sh Why did he get saying, sick or something? What, I'm I don't just saying it happens. <laughs> if you have a show to do, you don't want to eat the shrimp before. Good, good point. No. I, I don't think he no. want to eat anything on a cruise ship most of the time. No. Yeah. Oh. Bring bring your own water. Bring yeah. your own. Maybe yeah. bring your own Jack Daniels. <laughs> bring your own Jack Daniels. Absolutely. That's right. Angel, let's kick it back up to you, buddy. Oh, my question. <laughs> For Gacy DC, um, when it comes to doing the set list, do you got would you guys tackle some some of the new material <laughs> from the I'm latest sorry. album? I'm distracted by the. By it, the uh, me too. I was distracted by the same thing, so I'm, I'm not the only. One. Okay, back to my question before. Tell I was us distracted. the story, yes. won't you? Okay, um, AC DC released a new album. So would you guys include "Shot in the Dark"? On no. your set list. Okay. Have to ask. No, here. And here's why, because there, there are so many amazing ACDC songs. We can play 12 of them in our set time. So which songs would we eliminate? Right. And that's where we come up with it. It's like, it's hard for me. We even, we you know, we want to prevent our own, you know, our own boredom, you know, so we try yeah. to cycle in certain songs and that's take right. some out. It's always, it's always a, um, I'm pretty much the one who writes the set list, and it's always really hard on, on me to try and figure out, like, okay, maybe we should do this song, or, oh, but that means we don't get to do this one. So, we do have a, a healthy balance in this band of, of Bond and Brian Evers. I mean, we do a lot of, of the Bond songs because that's, you know, the, the, the crowd that comes to see ACDC, that's what they love, that, that's what they want to hear, but... Glenn is a big Brian fan. I'm a huge Brian fan because the first time I saw ACDC was on the For Those About to Rock tour, so left an, 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 a huge impression on me. So I love the Brian stuff. I love the last album. I loved Black Eyes. I, I, there's so many Brian songs that, that I love. And I've, we've, I've brought, you know, instead of we, we, I, we do Heat Seeker, but we changed it to maybe, you know, something, a little something sucker. Um, but we do some Brian songs, and Glenn and I are always there saying, you know, let's do this one, let's do this one. We try to make a healthy balance, but we love the, the Bond stuff, too. And I will say, through Chris and Steve, I learned a lot about the Bond era that I didn't even know. And I have to say that Powerage is, is now my favorite ACDC album. So, you know, we've all learned in this band, but it is tough when coming up with a set list because Chris says, if we want to do a new song, what song previously has to go that's always a crowd favorite? For sure. 
Yeah. By the way, Powerage, Powerage, uh, Edward Van Halen's favorite AC D, uh, DC record. Just I knew that. I'm just, I'm just, just, just speed and knock down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just doing my best to keep everybody reminded that this is Doug's uh, birthday show. I'm just saying right, yes. this is the most important thing. Uh, uh, no, I'm doing no, every, it's not. I'm, I'm doing everything. I, I insist. I don't know if you know, but I've created kind of a theme around it that I think uh, you know. I'll do what I can to draw attention to it. I feel well, like Doug, I, I, I have an idea. I have, hold on, Kobe. I have an idea. Can we all sing happy birthday? Absolutely. Okay, can we do it? There we go. Uh, 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 let's go. Uh, uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That was good. It was a nice mix. That was amazing. <laughs> and I did attempt to jump out of the cake, but failed miserably. I apologize. I'm stuck in the cake. <laughs> it was a solid jump. Thank you. I had to strip her stuck in traffic. Can we, um, can we uh, uh, um, tempt mm -hmm. you? Um, so you have a new album that's getting ready to be released. And I, I know you've been waiting till you can uh tour uh, can you either drop either one when you guys think you'll be going back out on the road because god knows we need to see you guys again mm -hmm. yeah we really we're not going new music king's x music too mm -hmm. well we're not going out until it's we know it's safe that we all feel comfortable Jerry had two heart attacks, you know so you know we're not we're not thinking about anything but health and science um, and we'll go out when it's time. Um, as for a new album, it's done. Record companies got it, and they're getting ready to start doing their thing on it. We have no date yet. Uh, it's going to be a while because, you know, got to do it right. And if that happens, also, hopefully, this pandemic stuff will not be so bad, and maybe we can go out and do some touring on the record mm -hmm. and do it right like most bands do, put a record out and go tour on it stuff so hopefully but you know you don't know in this uncertainty of age mm -hmm. hey, hey dougie so i want to also ask <laughs> how are you uh you know being in the la area and everything being crazy and even the guys in gacy dc with everything um you know la has been on a major lockdown and today we just got noticed that nam got pushed from january to fucking june what the hell uh. You know, yeah. but so I mean, how are you guys uh, dealing with this? And, and you gotta, you know, that heading out there. I don't go anywhere anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. And, That's pretty much and, everybody. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm a clock. Uh, yeah, I'm a closet recluse, and I love staying home and. You know, I've been able to survive, I and mean, it's a dream come true. I can do whatever I want to whenever I want to, and mm -hmm. just kind of, you know. But the thing is, I've seen people, and people come by, and we hang out, and you know, everybody's safe. It, you know, like we should be reasonably and stuff, and uh, yeah. And so it hasn't been any different for me, really. You know, I've still gotten together with people to hang out and had guests over and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But still wear my mask when I go out. And, you know, I live in a place where we don't have very many Karens, you know, or, or those other <laughs> people that uh, don't want to let you be yourself. So mm -hmm. uh, that's what I like about LA is I can be me mm -hmm. and nobody fucks with me. Excuse my expression. Right. No, mm -hmm. no, it's okay. Fine. Hey, hey, Doug, real quick. How, and you mentioned about Jerry and Ty. How, how are they doing? They're doing great. Uh, Jerry's doing awesome. Uh, he's all taken care of and hooked up and he's been, you know, doing a few things with people and stuff like I have just, you know, in, within reason, we, we go out and try to live our lives, you know, as best we can. Mm -hmm. And Ty's the same way. I just talked to them today, actually. We did a podcast right before this one. That's why I'm late. I got on. Uh, you're and, not late, yeah, Doug. You're, you're they, on Dougie time. We're cool, man. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But they're doing great. Nice. Well, we love you, and and just stay safe. We look forward to you being out on the road. We look forward to new music, and 
just look forward to you know be a hell of a show if King's X nerd Helen and fucking gay C D C did something badass. Just saying um, Ellie. Uh, um, cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. <laughs> I think uh, there's a, Bobby, yeah. I think you got a lot of thumbs up for that idea, dude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The immortal ones of hell. Are they thumbs? <laughs> Your road crew would be so happy with us. <laughs> oh, I, I would so carry your equipment. <laughs> so, uh, what? So, so, Doug, a quick, a quick question for you, bro. We were just talking to you about what you've got going on with King's X and that you've turned in the album, but we also, you know, can't talk to you without um, bringing up also uh, KXM with, you know, Ray is currently out on the road with Corn. And George is always kind of georging it up with his different projects. Are you talking with those yeah. guys? Are you guys bouncing ideas off uh, for any potential new KXM stuff? Yeah. Um, well, my uh, excuse me while I pimp myself. Uh, we've been talking about a new KXM record, but we haven't had a chance to really get together to do any serious discussing of it. But in the meantime, I just finished my solo record, and it'll be out. Uh, in October, I'm not sure of the date, and my grinder, my grinder blues band, and my grinder blues band, we are oh, like ZZ grinder. Top on steroids. Uh, our mm. record will be out the 25th of this month, and wow. so I, I got you know the solo and grinder blues, and so you know I got a lot of stuff going on. I got a video; it's been done for a while. We're gonna put that out in a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm just excited about just all this music that we're getting ready to throw out there. And, uh, you know, just in time. And, and then after we get all this stuff out, Ty's got a new album, too, he's going to put out right after mine. And then, like, like, right after that, King's X hopefully will come out, but we don't know exactly when. I just say it's d dessert and the appetizer. <laughs> <laughs> right on. That's I awesome, hope. man. I hope. <laughs> So, talk, so Doug and Gay CDC, talk a little bit about what you guys, uh, you know, have have done together because you guys have like you know jammed out before and, and done like live stuff. Um, talk a little bit about your guys' paths crossing. Well, uh, yeah. I, I, I will say that you know it was very surreal because this is the room we rehearse in, and it was very surreal to watch him walking in the door and then plugging into the amp and. And playing with us it was very surreal but actually brian you were kind of more in getting yeah. it together to have i mean doug is so instrumental in in our story um especially with ultimate jam night doug is the one that brought us to their attention um and i've known doug for for years and i've seen him off and on and have said hi but it was at the ms benefit at the whiskey one year that i went uh to see my friend gretchen and we were upstairs and I saw Doug and I said, you know, I remember Glenn told me that at the, was it the Golden Gods Awards? You gave Doug a pick. Glenn gave Doug a, a Gacy DC guitar pick. So that night I went up to Doug and said, hey, my name's Brian. We've talked a few times. We, we met in New York once at the Cat Club and hung out. And I said, but I'm the drummer of Gacy DC. And he's, he stopped. And either he or the guy he was with, um, pulled out the guitar pick from their pocket and said, this Gacy DC? I remember that story. And I, I was just floored because Doug, I mean, King's X is, you know, for me, the band that's right up there as an influence. And to have Doug say, my band, is, he had his, our guitar pick in his pocket. And we just started talking and got along famously. And, and Doug told the folks at Ultimate Jam Night about us. And that's how we got invited. And we just became really fast friends, and and we this we don't say this lightly when we say we love Doug because mm -hmm. he not only opened a lot of doors, but he is just down to earth, good people, and just a really really great great friend. Yep. yep. We're honored to know him. Yeah. And then I don't know who brought it up, but maybe it was actually Doug who said maybe we'll play a song together. We kind of always talked about it. I think it was at dinner one night. We kind of, oh, Steve maybe. and I might have convinced yeah. Doug to <laughs> possibly play a song that might be kind of fast and might rhyme with Let There Be Rock, but then maybe it's a, a word that's changed. Yeah, and Doug was, like, reference. Doug was like, oh, I've been waiting for you to ask me. So that was, that was it. <laughs> So we're like, consider so yourself asked. I, I, I have been. I have been waiting. 
one song with you guys. I love it. ACDC. It was just going to be so much fun, and I got a chance to do it. You guys, you guys, you guys. It was such a great night. We didn't go on until like 2 in the morning. It was a disaster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything got late. Yeah, people, yeah. people, cars, and everything was wrong. And then by the time we got up to play, you know, I mean, I had a whole bunch of shots in me, and it was just <laughs> surreal. It was just so much fun. Played the best I ever played, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was drunk though, so I probably played pretty sloppy, but anyway. <laughs> no, no, you know what? Even drunk, you were right in the pocket. You were tight. You were very tight. It was the best the band <laughs> ever sang. We're around. still talking about music, right? We know tight. <laughs> we know tight. Or maybe we don't. <laughs> some of us. Some, some of, of us. Some, some of us. Some of us. <laughs> There's a spectrum for everything. They, they remember. And floppy. We'll, we'll leave it in. We'll remember tight. They remember tight. And that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah, yeah. But some, yeah, but sometimes it's just admirable to just play loose. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> we did that very well now. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. So, we got uh, we got Steve coming back on. Fans, stay with us. We got a lot going on with this episode, as you can see. So you definitely uh, rest assured that we will definitely get to all of your guys' questions. I actually want to bring Caleb and Hal back back in on this. When it comes to like everything going on, when it comes to tribute bands in general, I'm going to start this off with Hal and Caleb. When it comes to like tribute bands in general, I love the idea like what you're doing with Nerd Halen as opposed to older gentlemen trying to do Young Van Halen. What would you say it is about doing a tribute act now properly, you know, where you're not trying to just reinvent the past, where you're trying to put things right on front street in a certain like style, have everything sound correctly, but also do your own thing properly? I think uh, I think the real trick is as long as you sound like the record, because what why do you, why do people see tribute bands? There's two reasons. One, that that band's never going to come play near them, or if they did, they couldn't afford a decent ticket. So they'll never be close, right? That's sonically, that's just out of their range, right? They just can't do it. Or the band doesn't sound like that anymore. They None of the guys in it can live up to whatever it was, so it's off in the distance. You go and see your favorite band, and it doesn't sound that's like it used to. Oh, stop. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, watch it. I, or easy but it, the point the point i'm trying to make is, is that they go and see like and once you sound like the band if you do everything you can to sound to nail the sound and they could close their eyes it could be anything the joy of that is there for them you've satisfied what they need and i think if you do that you could do anything you could come out dressed in as furries and do as long as you sound like it no one will give a shit max sabbath yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. The Iron Maidens. It's you know, there's a, wow. you know, there's some folks that like that's that's a novelty version of of Iron Maiden, even though they are for all practical purposes n not straight. You know, they're not doing characters like we are, you guys are. Um, but they're you know, it is because it's all girls, except when they have a male dr drummer, which I'm sure is a, you know, in this day and age, does it really matter? But um, <laughs> you know. Uh, but that, that I think is the key. If you sound like it, you can do anything you want. Then after that, if there's a kind of people want to be so fucking cool these days, it's one of the reasons why people can't enjoy rock shows is because you can't be seen enjoying anything. People are so ashamed to be having a good time that if you do it a little tongue in cheek or you're a little silly, or you add a layer of silliness to it, that lets them off the hook and they can just have a good time. Whereas yeah. if somebody shows up at a, in a nail it uh, cover band thing and they're a little overweight for the, what they're doing or they don't quite fit the mold or they're too old to be pulling that off or they don't quite sound like it, there's a lot of like, I'm silly for being here. They're silly for doing it. This is, we, there, there's a level of personal embarrassment that sucks the fun out of it. So that's my theory. So as long as you sound like it, yeah. you can do anything you want. Yeah, the, 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 the entire idea for Nerd Halen was... Uh, let's let's give everyone a false sense of we are joking and we suck. 
and were yeah. stupid looking and people could laugh as we got on stage and look at what we're wearing and go, <laughs> what are they, what's this? You know, we yeah. want that guy in the bar that's going, <laughs> this is going to be so stupid. And then the music go, starts. Holy shit. And then it's right. holy shit time because, you know, sonically we are doing everything that needs to be done to make your ear go, wow, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that we we pay such attention to that detail um, that your eyes are telling you this is funny, this is a joke, but your ears are saying, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's there's a fight between your own mind about what to what to right. figure out what's going on. And that's that's kind of what I think is setting us apart from a lot of the other bands because they're that's just right. satisfying the sound part, maybe. And, you know, the eyes are like, OK, they're trying to do something that's been done. Uh, we're adding the humor. I was getting to that a few minutes ago. Uh, there's no other Van Halen tribute band that adds humor to their act. Mm -hmm. They take themselves deadly seriously and they're getting and it they're all stuck wrong. In one they're genre. getting it all wrong because yes. Van Halen took themselves not seriously at all. And yeah. they added they were fun and funny at the show. But the music was the music. That's right. And it's, all these tribute bands miss that. They, they just try to be serious. Right. And you can't. You can't mm -hmm. do that. So we are bringing the laughs that none of these other tribute bands are bringing. And we're bringing the music, too. So mm -hmm. there and you go. And because, because our, our methodology overlaps, we can do Van Hagar songs and mix them. With, as far as ACDC is concerned, you could, like, the, the Bon Scott and Brian Johnson eras, because the look of ACDC is so consistent with the exception of a hat change. There's really not anything that interrupts the overlap of those things, but there's a very distinct difference between what Van Hagar sounds like and what Van Halen sounds like in the original version. So when, and, and from a singer's standpoint, that's the biggest challenge for me is because David Lee Roth sings from the bottom up from, uh, from all chest voice and blows his throat to pieces for the screams that he does. Sammy Hagar, Sam cooks it from the head voice down and does this really kind of purist version of things. And so switching those gears in a show is heavy lifting for me. And when we yeah. created a set where we can finally do it, which I think we did with the last gig, because we've been hunting and pecking, kind of trying to find how I can pull that off and do both things. I think we found it with our last set. I wasn't worn out like I was at previous shows. I felt like I could do another set entirely. Then I was like, okay, now we're in the part where we can let go of the reins and have even more fun. And mm -hmm. that's that's really the joy of a Van Halen show for me. Yeah, and that, de that definitely makes sense, too. And Caleb, like what you were talking about with uh, Van Halen back in the day, not taking themselves seriously. I mean, there there's even little stuff like that you could see clear in the videos. Like even when you take something like the jump video and you're watching like Michael Anthony making kind of these funny little like lip syncing, you know, record machine every yeah. time that scene came up in, you know, you're not going to get that with a lot of bands because he's also making kind of a goofy face when he says it as he and Eddie are kind of leaning on it on each other so yeah. i i see exactly what you guys mean like exactly i literally i literally like i took a mime class in eighth grade and i like <laughs> learned how to pretend lean on something you know for my class like this kind of thing and um so like every time you kind of fall into that like as a gag on stage you know is just a fun little silly thing that i throw in you know that and i've got a i've got i've been a, I've had to do a lot of cutting, and I've also got to do a lot more flex, like stretching. Those are the highest jumps we've had in a show so far, as the, in our last gig too, which is awesome. <laughs> well, we're the saving tights, them up for a year and a half. So. And, well, and the tights helped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't it's jumping in jeans. Work. It's hard to do that in high heels for us. That was I can imagine. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I think Paul, I think Paul Stanley will call bullshit on that. I think Prince would no. know. If Prince was still with us, he would yes, call bullshit on totally. that. Totally. Yeah. Man, I, I want to touch base on what Caleb said because it's exactly what we subscribed when we started this band. We all agreed on the same two points. We want to sound exactly like the record, and but we don't want to look like them at all. And right. we want people to have fun at the shows. But we want to disarm them by not looking like them. We don't want to 
hold ourselves to that standard right. where someone comes to see, because there's so many ACDC cover bands out there, we didn't want to be just another one. So mm -hmm. what was going to make us stand out? Well, we're going to change the lyrics around too, and that's what we had fun with. But, but Caleb, you're spot on because we subscribe to the same belief. And that's probably the number one comment we get after shows. People coming up to us saying, wow, we didn't know what to expect. We came in here like a little dubious, but you guys nailed the music. Wow. Yep. Right. And I laughed the whole time. Right. We laughed yeah. the whole set. Absolutely. Yeah, when, when we did our first uh, performance ever at Ultimate Jam Night, we did two songs. And when we oh, came off, there. yeah, when we came off, uh, you know, seven people stopped me and they all said that was fun. Yeah. And that was they that was the only word they could muster. Yeah. And to me, that that was victory because yeah. that's what this is all about. Right. Uh, yeah. This exactly. is fun. It's fun for us. It should be fun for them. And if we can bring the fun, then please, you know, let's continue. Yeah. Like hey, Jay. Yo, talk to me, Bobby. I, I, I think it's almost that time since we got two uh, very eclectic guitar players and Caleb. I think it's time for that segment. Okay, hold on. Good. Do and you let me. Let, wood? I think Where we're definitely. Even Carl, I need. To uh, uh, I think we can. Uh, oh, I think we can make that a, a, a thing, and this is probably the the correct show to uh <laughs> to do something like that. Do I we, uh... really need to know if they know their wood or not. I mean, well, oh, Caleb, you know, my. Do we need to uh, do we need to show off some wood, Bobby? Is that what we're going? Oh, you know, we we have a guest right here, but you know, oh, this would be know uh, me broken oh. by my master. I'm <laughs> just pro little proving I know my wood. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if I I do this, you know, we thought you were going someplace else. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna right. <laughs> damn it. Uh, Let's get his pants back on. If you're that much of a guitar player, ah, uh, well, Gilbert. Dang. Here's my wood. I thought that was a bass. Yeah. Yeah. There I've you seen go. A lot of Hold on, wins. we gotta see your, we gotta see your wood. That's a Paul Gilbert special. I can't find no okay. spot. There it is. It, it was there Paul's it from eight, '96. There you go. Well, That's there amazing. Is, is that like a 12 string? string? Yeah. Wow. One. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Want, That's an awesome looking one. Awesome. How do you even want, play that? Right. Well, I'm I'm with right. EVH right. gear, so I gotta I gotta stick to I gotta stick to uh you know what I'm <laughs> what I'm pushing here. Boy, I my job is tough tonight. I gotta highlight all is. I gotta yeah. highlight so much wait, wood. Wait a second. Yeah. Hold on, be patient. I gotta nice. highlight a lot of wood. Do you notice how all those straight guys <laughs> have to show off their wood, but you know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> nice work. Yeah. Teach me a child of love hereafter. If I okay, would you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you changing the screen? Before I go anywhere, work. Carl. This has got to go out to Carl. Uh, How does a gay man get into metal? Uh -huh. I, I mean, I know how I did. I got hooked on it, you know. But look, I wasn't into dance clubs or anything. Look, I've been to 54 back in the day. But uh, how did you guys get hooked on the whole metal scene? Are you are you meeting Steve? Steve and Carl, both of you guys. What, what? Oh, Clint, oh, Clint. Clint. Clint, Carl's the one who, who we lost in the pandemic. Oh, He's not, not lost. <laughs> he lost. Well, I he know lost. Sanders. I love his back post. He's still alive. alive. He's, He's still alive. alive. Yes, yes. <laughs> but take it away, Stephen Clint. Well, uh, I just already. Gra I always, I always gravitated to that type of music. Anyway, I mean, I grew up on heavy guitar stuff. My uh, family, my older, I'm the youngest of four older brothers and sisters. It was Aerosmith. It was Led Zeppelin, and then eclectic stuff. My oldest brother. It was uh, Switched On Bach. Um, film scores, big band. I was exposed to so much. And then when I picked up guitar, and it was right around the time the Van Halen was coming out, and all of Michael Schenker, Randy yeah. Rhodes. I mean, you. And I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area, 
with all the beginning of the thrash metal bands. And then within two years of starting guitar, I was teaching up there. I had about 50 students a week. Um, and so now, and Joe Satriani was teaching across town in Berkeley when I was in the East. Yeah, I worked at Hoshino. Yeah, I, I was there at the beginning stages of Joe. Yeah, so I mean, I had all these, you know, some of my students went on to do pretty great things. Um, uh, Phil Dimmel from Machine Head was a student of mine. Tim Calvert from wow. Forbidden was one of my students. Wow. Um, Bill Xavier, who now owns Pizza Bridge, was one of my students. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's where I started. And I got really serious into heavy guitar playing because that was such a hotbed of musicians. If you think about Alex Skolnick, Jason Becker, mm -hmm. um, you know, Joe Satriani. So they were all in my name, kind of in the same area. And we were coming up at the same time. I, I, yeah, we're all about the same age here. And, and that's great because, you know, and it was, um, and I, I'll bring this up. Interesting, you know, coming up in the eighties and all that. Uh, look, I hid my sexuality behind my guitar because it was like that thing that, you know, um, when Freddie was on uh, the, uh, when Freddie was diagnosed with AIDS, it, it really kind of was a, a rude awakening. But, you know, growing up in the 80s, it was that thing that you just didn't want to say, hey, I'm a gay guy who plays guitar. You know, it was like, right. uh. and when Halford came out and, and Dougie and I talked about a lot of things, Doug was probably... Um, we grew up in the same kind of era and I worked in the whole Christian market and did all that shit. But uh, Doug was the one who gave me the courage to come out to my parents. So, you know, thank you, Doug. Wow. Wow. Well, when I was, uh, I was, I had a little band in the late eighties and nineties called Cry Wolf. And um, we had a song called Pretender that charted in a certain part of the country. So we were able to go to us, Japan and Canada. We had a little taste of it, but during that whole time, I could not go anywhere near any of that. Um, just because the girls had to think that we were available. Um, otherwise they wouldn't buy the T buy the t-shirt or buy the CD or whatever. So there was this whole, um, obviously a phobia. I mean, backstage and on the tour buses, all kinds of crazy shit went on, like on both sides, the gates swung both ways. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a revolving door. Um, but, uh, you know, in front of people, you couldn't, you couldn't go there. So yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. It was kind of an unspoken rule. I was in a band that was looking to be signed uh, around 1985 up in Seattle, and um, we were told by um, <clears throat> the the record label sent a, a marketing team to groom the band, and they kind of were interviewing us and stuff. And they said, "Oh, you're gay. Well, even though you're one of the main songwriters, you're never going to be asked questions in public because we don't want to ever have it come up that you're gay." And I kind of went, "Okay." And the rest of my band was like, uh, wow, um, really? Uh, but that was, you know, those are the rules. If you're out of the closet or in the 80s anyway, if you're out of the closet yeah. over 30, if you're over 30, forget it. So, you know, those are the, those are the two pill, you know, like, okay, if you're one or the, no, no, no. But you know, if you think about it, like the heavier music or, you know, growing up, I was, uh, I was playing guitar in like progressive bands, um, um, a lot of Van Halen. A lot of like kind of Alan Holter stuff. I was getting into all kinds of things as a kid. But then I also played drums in a punk band. And I rode skateboards. I used to steal wood from construction sites and make oh, I used to skate. Yeah, you know what I mean? We were, uh, and punk was a perfect connection for, for gay people. Because it was it had a little more of an edge. There was a bit more of an attitude. You could kind of be a little more of yourself, I think. Yeah. But um, but still, I, I, I always gravitated towards the heavier, more powerful music. Yeah, you know, I think we could all po possibly say, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking from just myself, but I was a musician first. Like I played music and I loved music before I ever knew I was really gay. So I always first and foremost think of myself as a musician. So then later on I came out and like, well, how do I do that now? Um, but uh, but yeah, I think. Would you all kind of say the same yeah. thing? Well, I, I, I love the fact, and, and Doug will say it, and, and, you know, how can even... I don't think that needs to define me. Tony and I have been together right. 23 years. Look, the things he's done in his life 
has impacted everybody on religious politics and everything. I, I don't think that should define who you are or your character. And, right. and thank you guys for just being who you are and having fun with it. And, and I, 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 well, I, you know, I have to, I have to say that we're very lucky to be in this band with Chris as our singer, because as the bass player for Pansy Division, they opened a lot of doors for bands to come after that who could be themselves and be out. You know, they were opening for Green Day in arenas, getting stuff pelted at them because they were singing about gay stuff. Yeah. And Chris <laughs> really is a pioneer in Pansy Division. And we probably wouldn't be here doing this today if it wasn't for him. So we're lucky to be in this band with you. And Pansy Division, Pansy Division not only opened those doors, they knocked the fuck out of those doors. <laughs> All the people we met on that tour with Green Day, we met uh, Michael Stipe, um, Melissa Etheridge, um, the Indigo Girls. Um, we met Rob later. But in every one of those cases, we said, okay, it's your turn. We just sang, to, we just sang about sucking cock to eight-year-olds. I think you're okay to yeah. come out. He went to Melissa Etheridge and said, I can see your balls. She, like, she goes, you've got balls to get up there and sing those songs. I'm like, I can see yours now, honey, so it's your turn. <laughs> and certainly within 18 months of that meeting with all those different people, they all came out of the closet and none of them had repercussions. Fine. Not one. Right. It's all fine. Yeah. No, 100 for sure. Thank you. Jay, back to you, brother. Yeah, yeah, no problem, man. Thank you so much, Bobby. Uh, Angel, I'm actually going to bring you back in, buddy, because it's been a little moment since we've heard from the Summoners. I want to make sure that they get their time and that they feel appreciated. Do we have any questions for anybody from the fans? Yes, we do. Like I said, just a lot of love. Happy birthday wishes to, to Doug, and thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, we got a good question from our buddy. Like I said, I'm trying to look like him tonight. Uh, Matt Porter, yeah, that dude. Uh, will Nerd Hailing play some East Coast dates? Uh, no, we're 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 totally against yeah. playing the East Coast. <laughs> we're, we're a regional act. Sorry, you, Caleb. Absolutely not. Uh, no, uh, we we you know we've only been at this. We were, we only you know eight months before COVID, we started yeah. playing gigs, so it's really been uh, uh, a short amount of time for us. And because of the, you know, social media networking that, uh, that was done, a lot of people thought we've been around the block for a long time. So I have to remind everybody that it's been a really short uh, uh, growth period for our band. Yeah. We, we haven't been around long at all. So we've just been playing in the Southern California area uh, and, uh, that's all we've done so far so people ask you like have you ever been to austin texas have you ever been to london and it's like no we haven't been outside of los angeles yet but we are you know going cool. obviously to florida yep. in uh february Congrats. Uh, I'm so and uh about that. to the caribbean and uh that's gonna be you know a launching uh, point a new thing for us but you know there's no reason why we can't play uh, you know, some shows in New York City and uh, in Texas and in Florida and in Georgia and Chicago and uh, Seattle. There's no reason on earth why we can't uh, play in those cities and and, That's right. and bring some people in. Uh, you know, we, we've got uh, a lot of people uh, uh, talking about us. Uh, uh -huh. The guys in L.A. Guns uh, love us. Uh, uh, Tracy brings us up a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, you know, there's we're no gonna be we we're, gonna, we're gonna set I mean, we up some open for the Foo Fighters. I really think we'd be the perfect opener I for agree. the Foo Fighters. You know, yeah. like, uh, there's no reason. Well, I know F U Town is like right down the street from me too. You know, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. no. So uh, <laughs> there's no reason why we can't play Philadelphia and and you know Washington D.C. and Charlotte and and you. Know, I see it all happening. I see us uh, getting. Yeah. A lot of places that uh, that they want rock and roll, and they want they need us. Halen. They need us. They need, the world needs they do. Uh, the world needs fun and love and joy and music, of and course. especially right now. And and I think the timing is right for that kind of thing. So I agree. I everybody was showing off their wood. I had to throw. Uh, this is my favorite ah. guitar. 
Yes. Oh. Oh. Nice one. The eclipse. It's no, this is not an eclipse. This is an EC five hundred. It's a EC cheap son of a bitch. It's the same shit. Is that a full body thickness or is it a standard thickness or what? No, it's thin. But it's thinner. It, Got it. I, yeah, it is, wood uh, is thin. Is it what? How you got thin wood? <laughs> well, thin I can get long. it anywhere. That's it's my. It's, 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 it's out. It's uh, why am I blinking? That's so weird. <laughs> it's like throwing sausage down a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Woo! Woo! Oh, boy. There you go. Yes. See, we need we need to add uh, one way to rock to our set, so Pal and I can duel. We need to add yep. one way to rock. Yeah, exactly. That was so cool. <laughs> I don't know that we're in the same key, so. No, I'm, I'm E flat. There we go. <laughs> what? Hey. The hey. Is hey. Really cool. That's what's happening. Hold on. I gotta. I have to fix my camera. Yeah, the, the epilepsy said it is on as well. Seriously, just blinking away. Hey, yeah, but it made it look cool. Rolling with it, bro. Go ahead. Okay. Um. We have a comment from <clears throat> Candy Burton. Okay, let me bring it up. We love candy. Who doesn't like candy? Oh, damn it. Okay. I'll just read the damn thing. Um, what about... Okay, she has, has a suggestion. What about WrestleManiacs, a tribute band that plays all of the wrestling theme songs, and each member dresses up as... Like a famous wrestler, like for example, uh, Matt Porter can dress up as Ric Flair. No, she didn't say that, but I did. <laughs> I was just messing with her. She's gonna kill me. Good stuff. She better yeah. trademark that right away because I think I was saying the same yeah. thing. I remember all in onesies. So one of the one of the songs is a uh, drowning pool, right? Let the bodies hit the floor. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I'm in. <laughs> that's fun. I think the drummer for um, Black Sabbath. Uh, she actually, her side gig is she arranges those uh, Luce de la oh, Luce. Yeah. So she does like the Mexican wrestling yeah. stuff. So you're, you're close. Well, they are a real tribute band. Really? Wow. There well, is a, there oh, is wow. a WrestleMania. That's, that's actually, actually that's a good idea if they're playing themes from the WrestleMania. Yeah, there, there already is a, a wrestling parody group uh, called Fozzie. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I saw them open for uh, oh, Iron Maiden. <laughs> we saw them in the back. Oh, no, I know. I mean, I, I know Chris. Chris and I were on yeah, celebrity Chris duets together. He's a good dude and a great singer. Yeah. And they started yeah. off as a cover band called Fozzy Osborne. Yeah, Fozzy Osborne, <laughs> Moon Goose That's, McQueen. Yeah, and then eventually they were, you know, they they dropped the Osborne part. Which I thought was Oz, now, odd, you know what I mean, and, uh, and, and ended up with, uh, you know, with Fozzy, which is I think they've outgrown that name too. Um, they did a long time ago, I think, when they started doing legit songs. Wait, they played Fo they played Fozfest, right? Yes, totally. <laughs> um, Fozflesh, and uh, yeah, but I, it, they started out that way. There's there are a lot of bands, by the way. Don't let Godsmack bullshit you. They started out as an Alice in Chains cover band, of course. and and they're named after the song "Godsmack." Yep. Well, they lie about that all the time. The lead dude, lies. it's just horseshit. That's but, not a coincidence. I know. Most I'm from Boston. Bands. I I used to see them. Most yeah. most big bands, like even Queensrÿche. My one of my first shows was playing the Northwest Metal Fest in '81. Yeah, they were a cover of the band Queen, but all their songs done in the Third Reich. Uh, style. <laughs> really weird at you outfits. Actually, they were called it's the Mob German. because you know the Mob rules, and they're doing Black Sabbath and Judas Priest covers. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they just they hey. ran into each other on a. They they ran into Jeff at like just like a show, and they just needed a guy at the time, and it ended up just like working out. I'm actually shooting Fozzie's photography. Funny, that's how Gacy DC started. <laughs> so I, I want to talk about nope. the Dougie right now, real quick. Yeah. So Dougie, with uh, being uh, 
that very uh, mystique age of uh, <laughs> what life lessons can you teach some of us young uh, entrepreneur artists? Um, you know, uh, look, you, you've had a great <laughs> run. And uh, I, I, I get I, I'm hearing guitar and voice, and I can't turn my volume down on my phone. And sorry, it's distorting. It's and my fault. Crackle. Oh, and it's in the, in in the, my connection's been crackling ever since we've been yes. here, so I can barely hear what anybody's saying. And, Doug, can you and hear also, me? I can now. Okay, so Doug, what I'm saying <laughs> I, is, I heard you were asking a question. Okay, well, my question is. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, of you at, at coming to this beautiful age that you have, uh, what words of wisdom can you give to people coming up? Look, you went through a lot of shit, dude. How do you stay so fucking positive? Because no matter how bad anything gets, it'll always get better. If you if you stop believing that, then you just won't never go anywhere ever in your life. You always got to believe no matter where you're at or what's going on, it's going to get better. Just wait. Just keep on going. It comes to you and just keep doing it. And I, I really believe that from the bottom of my heart. And the other thing also I believe is that uh, at the end of the day, you look back at your life and go, what was the big fucking deal? You know, why did I cry and think everything was so important? Am I, are you still there? Did I lose you? I know, dude. Uh -uh. Dude, you got me oh, so Okay, deep. something changed. So, something happened in this feed and everything got quiet. We hear you. What happened? No, we're all It's like, called listening. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I, I'll tell you a little real quick story. I'm going to say it as quick as I can. Uh, about a year ago, before I turned 70, it was, this is a couple of years ago, I was having a meltdown in my head, you know, depressed and just going all down the list of everything that you can be upset about. And I was walking around my backyard and I had my, I had just got a new iPhone. So I videoed myself and I ran it for about 10 minutes, just spewed everything I could out. And at the, almost at the end of it, I stopped and I went, well, you're never going to watch this. So why are you going to do it? Because every time I've tried it before, as soon as I go, I hate my life, I turn it off because I feel so stupid. And so this time I went all the way to the end, just ranting and raving. And I stopped and I says, OK, if you learn something from all this, tell me what you learn when you listen to it back again. So the next day I went back out in the backyard and walked around and played it. I played the whole thing and watched me spew out everything I could ever imagine at the end of it. I asked myself, so what do you think? And I started laughing and I said, what was the big fucking deal? <laughs> That's why we love Father Doug. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a sip of a cocktail right now. I think you should. <laughs> Thank you. Should. you know, you know, Hal, it's actually kind of funny, dude, because I'm actually oh, shooting Fozzie's photography on Saturday night. <laughs> They're playing Baltimore on uh, on Saturday night, so I'll see that. Hey, Doug, we cover we, band we on so need another Denny's trip. <laughs> Tell Jericho yeah, I said fine. hi. I will. Yeah. What was it? what was that, Bobby? Are you and uh, you and Doug got a reputation at Denny's? Is that what I hear? I got to pick we, him up again. We got to go do another Denny's. Yeah, we, we had Denny's one time when he came to town, so we're going to do it again. We, the first time yeah. he came to town, we hit an Asian place. It was full. <laughs> and then we did, uh, yeah, look. God, Doug, I still Bye. remember the first time when I met you in 83. Bye. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Bobby. I love fucking yeah, yeah, with you. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, wait, What's up, Bobby? Come on. No, now look, we we were all conservative back then. Yes. That, that's when we used to use duct tape. <laughs> we used to what? Come on, come on, Bobby. Spit it out. 
No, no, no. We look. We hid a lot of things behind trees. You know, nobody knew who anything. It it wasn't until Doug played. Um, I remember when I told Doug when I came out to my mom. It was at the Starland Ballroom in uh, New Jersey, and I just gave him a hug and thanked him. Nice. It was right after the 94, you guys just played, you did the TLA in Philly right after the uh, Woodstock game. I remember that. I remember that. It was a long time ago. My, have we grown. We were young and pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you well, cute we still little are. Twink. Well, we're, we're pretty, but we're, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you. I'll, I'll let y'all decide that. I just don't yeah. pay attention anymore. <laughs> That's awesome. all right, Jay. No worries, man. Angel, I'm going to kick it back up to you, man, just to make sure that we got all the fans. But also, fans, at the same time, it is last call for alcohol, guys. Any questions, comments that you want to put into the guests, to the panel, this is your time to do it. We will circle back around for you guys one more time. But it is last call for alcohol. Angel, on the last segment that you were doing, did you get all the questions or do we still have some more at the moment? Um, we got all the questions. Just a comment from from Jeannie. Um, I love that story. I had to do that two years ago, and I've been great ever since. So thank you, Doug, uh, wow. for sharing words of wisdom. We can all use it, especially a lot, some of us here. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Sure, awesome. Brother. Thank you. Angel, do you have a question of your own, brother? Uh, my question is, um, do you guys ever, like fans will always, do you, do you ever have um, fans that kind of heckle you? Can you please play certain song? Can you please play certain song? It, like I said, it could be like a B-side song or a song that is like a deep track. Uh, and how do you handle those situations? Uh, well, I get it online a lot. Uh, um people want to hear you know because i do a lot of guitar videos solos and stuff and people want to hear this solo and that solo but it's never been live uh we don't really get much heckling in our act and uh i wish we would because we have we have the single greatest heckler responder on earth <laughs> in hal sparks uh so i kind of i hope we get heckled because i just want to see the man work his yeah. magic uh he was oh it's the hardest part will be staying in character yes while still yes. doing it which i'm totally capable of doing and when you've been when you've been dumped by a nerd that harshly <laughs> that's that's going to be a rough one that's gonna that's gonna be hard to recover from kids sorry yes um but yeah i'm i'm not worried about that and the other thing too is only an asshole would heckle us when we're obviously not taking ourselves seriously like yeah. you would have to you that is a pre heckle. You are literally like the audience most times in that situation will take care of it for you. And that's how we will win, because I guarantee if anybody decides to shout some shit while we're doing a show um, about the show itself, the rest of the audience will come to our defense because it's they're having such a good time. Mm -hmm. That's how you be, that's how you win that before it even begins. I yeah, think like, for us, we've gotten asked ahead of time. Um, or they'll have the, you know, the old weathered ACDC shirt from the original tour of Back in Black or wherever. And they're, they're you know, they have their one or two songs. And many times we're, we're already going to be playing it. So they'll, yeah. they'll come and ask, you know, and um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they're going to be upset because I think they're just going to be a little bewildered when somebody comes in with a dildo stuck to their base, smacking them in the face. Mm. Right. And it kind of throws them off anyway. Yeah, yeah sure. Unless so I, I got to interject real it. quick. Has I'm anybody had any of the God Hates Fags come out to the, any of their shows? Yeah. No, I did actually see that on the Green Day tour. Uh, there was one show in particular where it said uh, dicks are for chicks. Oh, excuse me. And it had the, the bunny from the tricks, you know, um, cereal. Oh, cereal. And, you know, I was I was just thought, oh, he's in for a big surprise. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, I... We don't really get the the uh, the. Would you play this song? I think yeah. most people are are just. Uh, I think thrown the, by us. The, and, folk, and for the people that place. the people that come to see us are pretty well informed. And probably the last thing you want to do is throw shade at an all gay band 
completely dressed up on stage. Right. You know, not the smartest move. <laughs> but it wasn't heckling, but there was a fist, there was a fight that oh, you yeah, had to break up at the right. Right. I was gonna say there was a fist thing. I'm like, really? There's a fist <laughs> oh, honey, that's later. That's the, no, this was, <laughs> was a fifth fight or just a... I don't know what it was, but there we was a... We are sponsored by Crisco. <laughs> We like to put the fist in the finger. <laughs> 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 On that note. Oh. <laughs> we put the finger right in you. Oh, there you have it. No, we actually, uh, there was a fight at one of our shows at the at the Viper Room, you know, it, but it was straight people. I don't know what they were doing, but they were fighting, and I'm that doesn't fly with me. I'll stop everything to stop a fight. So That's the only yeah. show that we've ever stopped. That's true. That is. Yeah. That's true. So... The straights. Mm. <laughs> we're very violent. We, yeah, we, we got a lot of pent up. Hey, issues. Bobby, where were you that day? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. been, I haven't been, some, been straight in years. There's been some guys online who who are really uh, offended by the word nerd next to Halen, really? which I think is 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 a very insecure human being. Yeah. Uh, well, we can uh, relate because there's a lot of people that did not like the gay in ACDC. Yeah. So it's and it's it's you know that guy is <laughs> whoever does that is it's like the the third member of the Cobra Kai team you know right uh, <laughs> the sweep the leg guy. Get him, Johnny you know yeah, that right. one of those guys get him a body bag yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's also he's also in his mid fifties still dressed up as Cobra Kai so there you go right he's, he's just probably that has guy to see Nicola close. you know he's like an extra <laughs> in the movie and he's kind of looking around going right right no nerd next to Halen right you know and no one's <laughs> yeah his his, his his mullet has turned into a, you know, riff right. raff. So bald in the front rock and roll. I, th I think it's funny when you get that kind of that kind of stuff. But uh, oh. it's, yeah, I, I it's, do not. I, I, it's a good. It's a good rule of thumb not to dictate what you do in your life and the joy you seek to find in your life, uh, and and let that be dictated by people who suck the joy out of life and are completely useless to a good time. That's really Amen what you're, that. talking about. you're talking hey, about Hal, people. It's just funny that you just use the word dictate and <laughs> <I'm> suck. <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's not. It's not weird at all. Know your audience is also one of the other things. Yes. That yeah, I apply well, to. I bet Doug, though. I bet Doug has actually had more opportunities for fans to come up to him and say, you know, they're just basically trying to prove that they know your deep catalog. So they're like, would you play this song? And so they, he's probably had more opportunities for that. I probably do that to Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it to Doug. That's uh, oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm guilty of doing that to Doug. I am. But I, I can <laughs> go online and he give. I can go online any given time and find a set list that somebody's made up for us that wants us to do it. You know, yeah. so and it's a beautiful thing. Are you kidding? It's so flattery. Oh, that yeah. People yeah. want to hear that. It, I mean, we can't do everything. I wish we could. Look, hey, Dougie, you know, some of your, have yeah. you really ever freaked anybody out and just really just went deep and got some deep cuts that you guys have like, never played and i, I mentioned done, to you we, the last we, time you we were, do. the last time you were out you know you're doing majority of the singing now and ty kind of stepped back a little bit yeah um he got lazy and decided he just didn't want to sing <laughs> <laughs> he got scared <laughs> And um, but uh, we made a commitment because um, as an older gentleman, I am um, I can't sing like I did when I was 20 or 30 years old. So uh, we made a deal that we're going to, you know, start pulling out songs that he sings so we can give me a break and make it balanced out. So it'll be good. And mm -hmm. our new album um, has a lot of Jerry and Ty in it. And we plan on doing a lot of the new records. So you're going to love it. Great. We decided to put, we, we all can sang on everything. Little, um, can you give us some of the tip? Is it more older <laughs> style? You know, just the tip. Um, uh, here's, what I, here's, here's what I can say is every song is completely different. Every song was recorded and mixed for the song. Um, it, we call it our white album in some ways. Um, 
Jerry sang uh, a, a few songs. I mean, we there's a lot going on. We got violins and cellos and uh, gosh. What else? I mean, giving everybody put, wood we, now. Now everybody. Yeah, we put we put we put the kitchen sink in every song. So, and lyrically, you know, I mean, I'm 71 years old, so I got something to say still from a 70 year old's point of view. So, it's just me spewing out shit that I learned and I think about as usual. Um, and Ty and Jerry's the same way. Um, you know, Jerry's been through a lot, so uh, he's got a lot to say also, and. Um, He's penned some really amazing songs on this record. So uh, I can't wait till you guys hear it. I hope you like it. Um, either you're going to love it or you're not going to like it. Um, the other thing I'll say about it, too, is that other than Pro Tools, the whole record is analog. Everything. Wow. Even mastering. Nice. Even mastering. Even it's not. It doesn't have compression. We have tape saturation to give you that that smooth sound and I mean, we went completely old school. And Michael Parnin, who produced and recorded the record, and uh, Hal knows him. He, in fact, Hal introduced me to him. Um, this guy is just a genius. And he really painstakingly made an amazing sounding record. <laughs> and um, hopefully we're going to put it out as a double album on the 45 speed. So when you play it on the record player, it's going to even sound better. Mm -hmm. That's wow. Awesome. awesome. Wow. So Check. just hope you like the songs. Just hope you like the songs. <laughs> That's super duper awesome for sure. So first and foremost, everybody, we want to thank you guys so much for taking some time with us this evening. We're going to spin it right around the panel one more time, and then we'll cut everybody loose for the evenings. But we definitely want awesome. to thank you guys in advance for hanging out with us. It's been a whole lot of fun, and we really hope that you guys have had a good time as well, for sure. Um, so... KCDC, I actually want to aim this one at you guys because I'm just kind of curious with the show that you guys put on, the style, the, um, everything that you really do put out on Front Street, being comfortable with yourselves, being comfortable with what you put out there. You know, with all of your history and coming up and everything that you've endured from your younger ages to what you've learned in your middle ages to what you're executing now. When you look at other entertainment value things like movies and other stuff like that, like how do you kind of look at that kind of stuff? Because I was recently, I've seen it a bunch, but I was recently watching a movie called Party Monster that you're probably familiar with. Um, yeah. <laughs> Michael but Allen. it deals with, you know, that kind of a scene, but from more like the club aspect, not like the hard rock, you know, aspect of it. But how do you kind of look at like just, you know, the change in like scenes where you'd like to hope that nowadays everything is considered a little bit more like understandable when there's still, I mean, there's still stupidity out in the world and it's probably always going to be there. But when you look at like movies, other entertainment that have tried to tackle that kind of a scene to what you guys know is really a thing, how do you guys look at everything? It's a good question. We, um, just off the top of my head, you know, we changed the lyrics of TNT to PNP, which in, in the gay community, gay community means party and play. But the straight crowd doesn't really get that. And when Sebastian Bach played with us at the Viper Room, came up yeah. and wanted to do that song, we were like, well, we better tell him it's just TNT because he ain't going to get the PNP <laughs> reference. And when we when we do the song and do PNP, we can see in the audience that people are singing along, but they don't really know what it is. So I have to illustrate it for them, right? <laughs> well, Bill, I think over the I think over the course of you know maybe you bring poppers I, out on stage. Yes, we are poppers. We are. <laughs> 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 we get the dancing <laughs> throughout. The gay day. guys just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's gotten a lot better. I, would have to say it. I think people generally are a little more tolerant. I. I think the timing for us is good also because of what we're seeing in the news, you know, saying we exist to, um, because they keep throwing gay people off of buildings. Um, so there's an underlying purpose to what we do. But again, it's for joy and entertainment. Right. But, I, but I've seen in my own, you know, having been uh, pulled out of cars, having had my head rammed into drinking fountains for being gay and stabbed, Jesus. you know, for being different. So I, I've, seen a, I've seen a progression. And... You know, I've seen younger generation saying like, "You guys are just a, a lot of fun," and it's and we think you sound really good. For those that know ACDC, they're like, 
it's a good this is this is a good version and it's entertaining for those that don't they just come up and start dancing i mean it's it's starting to change a little bit we feel a little more tolerance but yeah. still a reason to be here and a lot of people now have seen this multiple times yeah so that sort of disarms the people around them so if they've got a lot of people who are ready to to you know get into the set then it helps them i think um i think i think there's a lot less of the um of being upfront about it because i think it's uh it's you know if you're against being gay or that i think you kind of tend to weed yourself out you know if everyone else is having a good time and you're not those people usually head for the door um so i think it's gotten better overall i mean certainly as steve said you know from our you know upbringing it's it's been pretty brutal um so it's th thankfully kids today don't really have to go through the same things we did um <laughs> but we're still not out of the woods. There's yeah. a lot of homophobia in this country. And as, as long as there is, we're going to exist. And yeah. we may not be, you know, writing songs about gay activism, but we're going to be up there singing songs that everyone knows. And our name is Gay CDC. It's right there on the marquee. <laughs> so we'll continue to be in their face. We're not going anywhere. So F you Republicans. We're not going anywhere. Well, well. Sausage. Are we well, all right, Jim. Fox, right? <laughs> yeah. Where's Carson? Bobby, take it away, buddy. Last so, trip around the table. Before we end, I really just want to say thank you to all our guests tonight. How, Caleb, JCDC, Doug, you know, look, um, like I mentioned, you know, Tony was here. 23 years we've been together. I, I And I have to thank the three guys I'm with for 80 plus episodes of doing this show. I feel like fucking Freddie Mercury and they're like Brian May and, you know, these guys have been behind me for 80 episodes and know who I am and know, you know, look, thank you guys for encouraging me, allowing me to be me allowing Tony to be himself and, and doing what you're doing. But thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, look, I'm here to raise a flag for everybody, for equality, for everything, for disabilities, for Tony. And, but thank you so much. And thank you, Jay, Steve, and Angel for just being my brothers of another, you know, another mother. We love you, and bro. We that's, love you. That's it. We love you, man. There you go. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, absolutely. Let's kick it up to Angel Angel. Well, again, um, just want to read a comment from from David um, Rosenfeld. Um, absolutely one of the most forward-thinking bands out there. King's S, always ahead of their time. Jerry is awesome. Um, Doug, changed the sound of bass. A true modern take. And... Like I said, I'm just, awesome. you know, to our guests, you know, thank you for taking time out. I'm Doug. We love you. Uh, we're here to celebrate hey. you. You know, thank we you celebrate so much, people man. while they're alive. Let them know that we love them. Uh, Gacy, DC, you know, thank you for being here. You're actually the yeah. first one to have all of the band members together. So thank you. <laughs> you made history tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how I do check you out like on Twitter. Party. Yeah, <laughs> that's later. <laughs> nice. What a what a great time! What a party! Yeah, and how I do check you out on on Twitter. I love your show. By the way, Caleb, we, we so love you. Thank you, Caleb, for you know putting all that shit together. Mm. And how I love that Tony and I were at one of your first shows when you guys played the Viper Room. I was going to say I love Nerd Halen. Yeah, I love Nerd Halen. Yes. Did we lose no, him? I didn't want to forget them. We too. Yeah. He's muted. Are you on mute? Did we lose Hal? Yeah, we Hal, lose. you're on mute. So, you know, Tony and I were there right when you guys did the Viper Room there the we first go. Sorry. time. Yeah, I know. I And it was, uh, like, I always felt like this is one of those situations where we've got nowhere to go but up in a good way. <laughs> in the beginning, <laughs> I was like, all right, this is going to be a this is gonna be a learning curve on this for me. Emotionally. And by the way, just to prove that I'm adaptable, Caleb. Um... You need what? a curly Six. blonde perm now. Yeah. There's only <laughs> one way to rock. 
That is so loud. <laughs> Get that one. Steve, if you're going to play a kid. There you go. Pick <laughs> that. This is you, you know oh, what's yeah. weird, guys? What's this weird? This is the butt pirate what? guitar what's, you need. <laughs> what do you say, Doug? What's, What's weird in my head in my headphones is one guitar is distorted loud and the other is so soft I can barely hear it. So it's yeah, like it's, two it's, people it's, fight and go back. It's weird. That's right. Well, <laughs> l- hopefully it was my guitar that was the loudest. That's the important thing. That's, Actually, that's it wasn't. But <laughs> oh, damn it! Sorry. <laughs> there it is. Ah! <laughs> That's him. Yep. Yeah, that's Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Though. Mine's mine's actually just an amp in my room. He's actually running through some sort of concert rig. Um, I will say, <laughs> since this will be my way out the door as as well. Um, I love you, Doug. Happy birthday. I love you too. Um, Talk to big, you soon, Bob. I miss you. Yes, big virtual hug until I can give you a real one. Um okay. and thanks and thanks you got to everybody on here for having me on as well. And then nice. um these upcoming, uh, you know, we are playing as Nerd Halen in October. We've got a gig uh, at, uh, you know, our, our as one of our biggest venue gigs, right, Caleb? It's San a, Manuel Casino. Yes, so we're playing San Manuel. Our first casino show. It's on That's the right. 12th of October. It's a Tuesday night. Uh, we're playing two hour long sets and mm-hmm. uh, should be a really good time. Yeah, Let it'll be a party. all the info and we'll get it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And then, uh, and then, of course, uh, thanks you guys for to, like having us on to to yammer about this stuff. And so, hey, how before you it. go? And yeah. I know you do your political show. Tony wants to get involved with you, so great. Um, I need to get in touch with you, and Tony would like to be on your. I show. think it's great. I, yeah, we'll have him on the radio show. It'd be really great. Um, and and the, to the gay CDC guys, we'd love to play with you guys again. It was so much fun, and you guys are a joy. I think. Well, how about January fifteenth back at the Echo? I th- uh, I'm for it if we're not in when's when's we're in February right is that when yeah yeah, yeah we're here we're here yeah let's do it let's put right. it on the book January fifteenth January fifteenth send me the it. dates I'm flying out since fucking name got canceled yeah that's right I'm for it let's do it okay let's put it on the book I'll get it I'll, I'll work it out and Hal and Hale we, we feel the same way about you guys we love you guys it was yeah, such yeah, a great so double bill so it was so much yeah. fun awesome. absolutely we will we will do the big hard push no pun intended. There you go. Yeah. So, um, anyways, thank you guys for having us on, and thanks, You're and and welcome. you know, and we're all so lucky that like you know Caleb and and I kind of patched this thing together. I I pinch myself all the time. Caleb, you're great, and I will see you guys in person very soon, and hopefully we'll get past. You know, Delta and Lambda and Eric and Ivanka and whatever the other variants <laughs> are. I agree. Ivanka. <laughs> 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 it's true. Oh, they're virus like Ivanka. Hal, before you guys, uh, ju- before you jump off real quick, Hal, why don't you kick it off? Caleb, Caleb jump in right after them. Then um, Doug, you, and Gacy DC. But real quick, all of you guys, where can you be found for all the fans that are looking? Right. Uh, um, go. I'm the easiest one because I just at, at Hal Sparks on nearly everything. But my show, infotainmentwars.com um, or fwank.com if, you go, if you're a Twitch fan, which is F-W-A-N-Q.com, fwank. And, um, and then, of course, because I'm, I'm on – basically every day. And I've just added a, a set, like a three days a week, I'm doing a morning show or it's just like a hangout coffee and chat kind of thing. Cause my, my daily live stream is a monster in and of itself now. Um, and then add that to live gigs and, and, and when, you know, life and production starts going back to abnormal, um, it's going to be a busy five years. That's my prediction. Right Good. on. Absolutely. <laughs> Caleb. Yes. Uh, you can find Nerd Halen uh, at nerdhalen.com. Uh, and then all our socials are at Nerd Halen. Uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, you can find me at uh, this little 
handle right here on Instagram. Um, that's where I do my solo videos and, uh, um, yes. you know, uh, we are continuing, uh, mm -hmm. as, as we can, and, uh, we are determined to become the greatest, uh, tribute band. And happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank thanks. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Love you. See you guys. Right. Peace out. Bye. 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 Doug, where can you and King's X be found? Uh, all you got to do is Google Doug Pinnock or King's X, and you will get more information than you want. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's all there. I really, I never know any of these. So I just know everything's under Doug Pinnock when I put it up. So <laughs> Instagram, Snapchat, uh, uh, Twitter, everything is Doug Pinnock. D-U-G or D-O-U-G. It doesn't matter, Pinnock. Uh, and then King's X, yeah, just Google King's X dot com or King's X anything, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's the easiest way. Uh, absolutely, and thanks, thanks so much for my birthday party. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Happy yeah. Birthday, brother. Yeah. Happy birthday. Absolutely, and uh, JCDC, give it to us. Oh, yeah, give it to me. Yeah. Uh, so it's gaycdcofficial.com, and I think it's at gaycdcofficial, um, Facebook, and Facebook and Instagram, uh, YouTube. There's a lot of YouTube videos, so uh, have fun with that. Um, uh, but yeah, we're playing um, we're playing a couple shows this year. Uh, one in Berkeley on October second uh, at the Ivy Room. We're playing um, Costa Mesa this Saturday at the Wayfair. Ooh. Uh, so send me those. We'd love to get you out to the East Coast, and and we'll do some bookings out we're, here. We're trying to do September 2022 to uh, book a whole um, East Coast, like do East Coast and end up in Chicago. So okay. it's coming. Ah, mm. uh, so are you going to do IML? <laughs> I would um, love to. I've hosted I that. You know, I've, ho you? I've hosted. Yeah, I've hosted that. No, no, way. no I'd love that. That'd be awesome. Playing the host. That would be the cool. But the other thing too, I'd love to put you into. I'll put you in touch with uh, my buddy Billy, who runs One Magical Weekend in Orlando, which is Gay Days. Tony and I were there right after the Pulse nightclub shooting, mm. so it, it, we lost a couple friends there as well. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. You guys would be the shit. Agreed. Thank you. Awesome. That'd be wonderful. Well, not, not the shit, because nobody likes a dirty bottom. <laughs> not <Right>. nobody. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody. Oh, 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 my, oh, oh my dear yeah. sweet Bobby. No, oh. no. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, Lord Bobby, Cosmo Bobby. On that note. <laughs> All right, no, cheers. On that note. Metal Summoners, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Metal Summit. We love you guys so much. On behalf of our guest, Gacy DC, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Al Sparks, the great Doug Pennick. Thank you guys all for coming on with us and celebrating Doug's birthday, rocking out with us, and just having an old-fashioned, just good time. So we really appreciate all of you guys so much. Peace and love. And thanks so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you guys so much. Metal Summoners, make sure you're hitting us all up on all of our socials. Hit up the Metal Summit on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter. Make sure you're following all of those uh, pages so you can subscribe to them. Make sure you're hitting up all the guys as well. You've got myself at Just a R N R Junkie on Instagram. Angel has got his Instagram as Facebook. Psycho Steve, Bobby Dreyer, we can all be found. So definitely make sure that you're hitting us up. We would love to connect with all of you guys. As always, guys, guest announcement will be on Friday. It's going to be something... There's a little bit of this episode that will carry on to next week's episode. That's all that you guys are going to get for that. But guest <laughs> announcement is on Friday. Next Wednesday, we will have an all-new episode of the Metal Summit. But again, thank you so much, Metal Summoners, for everybody that was on tonight. For Hal Sparks, for Caleb Rappaport, for Doug Pinnock, for Gacy DC, and on behalf of Angel Alamo, Psycho Steve, Bobby Dreher, and myself, Jay. We thank you guys. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. As always, thank you've been you. watching. The metal Thank summit. you. Yeah.